doesn't matter what I do, there's always some technical issue right at the start. My buttons weren't working. Oh, everyone, welcome, welcome. Also, it doesn't matter what I do. <clears throat> it's very hard for me to be any in any way at all impressive after that title sequence and the bombastic music. And then you just get me at the bench. It's like, oh, OK, never mind. Hey, everyone. Welcome, welcome. It is. I know he said it's Warhammer Sunday. Then It's not. Welcome, welcome to the emodels.co.uk YouTube channel. I'll, let me have a swig of coffee before we get going, because your voice is already going a bit throaty. <clears throat> been absolutely fine all day till the camera goes on. Then my voice goes all croaky. I know it's just I don't know. I don't. Anyway, welcome, welcome to the emodels.co.uk YouTube channel, where if you were around this time last week, you'll know that I've been building the Knight Preceptor Callis Rex. Yes, I'm going to be doing a full paint uh, tu uh, words. Start again. I'm going to be doing a full painting guide for this for my good friends at eModels uh, in the coming months, coming weeks, I should say. Uh, so at the moment, I'm just getting it built ready in advance for that. Uh, I'm waiting for stock to come in so I can crack on with the. I'm going to be painting this fully and doing a proper tutorial, but I need them to have the paints in stock so I can say, go and get these paints, they're brilliant. As there's no point in me doing that if stock. So I'm waiting for that. So in the meantime, I'm just live streaming the actual build part. And so far, we yeah. feast your eyes on the enormous. Oh, hang on. I've also taken them off the sprue. We've done that so far. So far, we've got a nice set of gams. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to be cracking on. But welcome, welcome. If you're not familiar with this channel, I know a lot of you come from my channels. I'm going to knock the camera like that. That's probably not something I wanted to do. Hang on. Yeah. No. I only spent hours setting all this up and now. I just knock it and it's, well, I just should we just go home? Let's go home because it's this it's already gone to pot, hasn't it? Anyway, yes, let's move my camera now. Yes, if you're not familiar with this, if you're used to my stuff, this is for my good friends at emodels.co.uk, your one stop shop for all your model making needs. And now, of course, all your games workshop needs because they stock games workshop stuff, woohoo! Which is why I'm going to be doing this build to highlight that and the painting tutorial. So we're going to be cracking on. But yes, uh, the link is in the description below the video, but go to emodels.co.uk and pick up some stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm not used to doing an opening that's not on my channel, so I'm not familiar with what I need to say. <laughs> it's really weird. It's like I've only been doing this for emodels for like, you know, five years. Uh, I don't know. Yes, we're going to crack on today, but make sure to go to emodels. A quick update for you, a quick announcement for uh, people who use eModels. If you are uh, of the occasion to go to eModels from time to time, if you live locally, if you are planning road trips, and we've been waiting for quite a while, as you know, because of everything that's been going on in the world, the uh, the warehouse, it's a working warehouse shop. It's not an actual store. Uh, it's been closed uh, for quite a while because of lockdown. Uh, that will be, hopefully, fingers crossed, they are saying, and has been announced, that they'll be back open again on the 12th of April. So keep your eyes peeled. They have put an announcement up on the Facebook page. If you're not already subscribed to the Facebook page, eModels LTD on Facebook. Um, you need to be, because that's where you get all the latest updates and stock updates and things like that. So do go and, do go and make sure you follow that. Let's have a quick look at chat before we get going, and then we'll do some work. <laughs> yeah, me do some work, I don't think so. Good thumbs here, and Squishy's here, but you can't quite see Squishy, because Squishy's just off camera, and there's a dirty grey eModels logo there, and Sprue's in the way. New logo, new mascot, there you go. Uh, so we have in chat, we have Sprue and Glue and Lord Barkley the Third with the first two. They were in hours ago. Uh, Mayhem Model Works and the Raging Modeler are both in as well. Uh, welcome, Made in Mayhem Model Works says, so I, I dipped my toe into Skyrim. Damn it, Fox, this is your fault. Welcome to gaming nine years ago. Welcome to the entire, the, welcome to the, the hot newness, the new hotness nine years ago. You'll love it there. Are you on console or PC? And if console, which console? Tell me, because I can give you information about some of them. Uh, but yes, welcome to Skyrim. That's the next two and a half thousand hours of your life pleasantly taken up. You'll love it. Trust me. Uh, Lynn Dipples in. Hi, Fox. Hi, Wendy and everybody else. I'll be lurking. I have company coming over tomorrow to help set up a TV antenna. I also haven't watched the first part yet. I will need to watch the first part at some point. Oh, we built some legs. <clears throat> uh, who else? We've got David Sanderson's in. Afternoon, everyone. Welcome, David. Panzer Koenig is in. Welcome to you. Uh, Dad at Scaly Models is the, the mod that's in chat so far. You'll see Dad as a mod because he's got a spanner. He's got a spanner. But Dad is a lovely, lovely fella. He'll keep yourself. He'll, he'll keep yourself. No, he'll keep you safe and protected in chat. He'll look after you and save you from the bad people. But if you cross him, he'll chop you in half and feed you to the pigs and then launch what's left into the sun. 
So don't cross the mods. And also model making gurus in chat, but we don't know who that is. We don't care about him. He's another moderator, but we don't care about him. Uh, Wendy Hickson's in. Hi, Fox, and to everybody else. Welcome, Wendy. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we have, who else have we got in? Uh, Steve Ford. Afternoon all here for my second instalment. Welcome, Steve. Thank you for coming back. It's nice when people come back after suffering the first episode. It's quite nice. Uh, we have EC Idaho. Good afternoon all. Morning for the colony, says uh, EC. Welcome to you. Who else have we got coming in? Uh, now, I don't expect a massive ton of people. I think we're up to date with who's in the who's in the chat. I don't expect, as I've said before, massive amounts of people to watch these streams on a Friday because it's a Friday. And I know some people are going back to work now, so uh, I need to get some schmutz off my glasses because I've got a big blob in the way. I know some people are back at work now, and obviously for some of you it's the middle of the night because it is 3 p.m. here in the UK, so I know for some of you uh, it's not the best time of day. Just cleaning my glasses. Yeah, right, so let's crack on. So if you remember, like I said, we did the legs. So the next step is I need to do a quick bit to clean up on one of these legs because I spotted a mold line. Uh, the next step after doing Telegs, we're building the Knight Preceptor Canis Rex version of this kit. This is the Imperial Knight kit. There's several of them you can get. One of them is the is boxed and labelled as the Knight Warden kit, which is, I think, seven Imperial Knights in one. You can build seven different variants or six. This is the Canis Rex kit. It's exactly the same as the Knight Warden uh, kit. The Knight Warden's got a big green box. It's exactly the same, except for one extra spree, which allows you to build the Canis Rex variant, which comes with Sir Hector Cerberin and a pilot figure, which is also Sir Hector. Uh, that's the only difference. If you want to, whatever Imperial Knight you want to build, uh, you can either get the, the Green Knight Warden kit, which gives you all of them except the Canis Rex, or I'd re actually recommend, if you want a pilot in your knight, in the cockpit you may as well get the canis rex version and then you can still build it the beauty of this is you can still build it as all the other versions that come in the other kit but this one you get the pilot uh, and sir hector cerber and who can double as something else but just to give you an idea of how big imperial knights are that's him next to his imperial that's how big imperial knights actually are supposed to be yeah and i didn't realize this but when you play the game normally when your imperial knight gets down to zero health it just either dies or explodes it takes people out with it with this one because you've got the pilot when you when your imperial knight gets down to zero health if it doesn't explode you can actually before it's taken off the board you can put him on the board in its place and it treats him as if he's jumped out and he's running around with his with his pistol shooting dudes shooting fools so even if your imperial knight canis rex gets destroyed you can still run around with him afterwards i like that i like that right where are we up to uh it's not suffering it's very enjoyable says steve ford you have a good tolerance of pain uh, Chris at Gross Models is in. Welcome, Chris at Gross Models. Hello, hello, hello. Another one of your moderators who will keep you safe, but will uh, flail you into a paste if you cross them. Don't cross them. Uh, I think Dad has asked the question. Uh... Oh, he says, uh, well, better do it. What's on your bench and what's in your belly, folks? Yes, as always with all my streams and all your models content. What's on your bench? What's in your belly? What are you working on right now? Uh, and what's in your belly? What have you eaten? And if you're not working on anything, what have you ordered recently from eModels? Yeah. Now, remember, this is an eModels stream, so please keep it nice and neat and tidy and safe for kids in chat. Keep it family friendly is the words I was looking for. And also, please don't mention other retailers in the chat. This is for eModels.co.uk. Uh, EC Idaho says, mm, playing my first Khajiit in Skyrim after about 10 million hours of playing before, you should always play as a Khajiit. Always. You get night vision. You get claws that can swipe when you're doing unarmed melee. You can you get extra damage points. And also, you're a cat dude. You have a tail, wiggly tail. And you're a cat. So just play as a Khajiit. There's no other reason to play as anything. You, you should always play as a Khajiit. Forget everything else. Everything else is rubbish. Khajiit at best. Khajiit agree that you should play as Khajiit. Um, where are we up to? I'm getting excited now. Mayhem says, console and Xbox One X gamer tag is Andy Warhound. So now everybody can send uh, Andy, Mayhem Model Works, uh, an, an Xbox friend request. If you're on Xbox or if you're on PC with Xbox Live. Uh, console, uh, if you've got it on Xbox One X, dude, you have to have mods. You've got the best console for mods because the, the best mods, apart from you, know, the best console for mods. Best mods are on PC. The best console mods are on Xbox. You need to get in you go you need to get if you oh if you want a list of all my mods that i use to speed things up uh, let me know send me a message on the facebooks because you know who i am um, send me a message on the facebooks i can send you a list of all the mods i have installed for the skyrims on xbox in you go of course is the most important 
Nice legs, Fox, says Lynn. Well, hey, I work out. What can I say? Ildi <laughs> uh, is in. Hey, Ildi. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, Panzer Koenig says, in my belly, a bowl of weeds with grated cheese. Bench my PS4 controller and Fallout 4. Yes, Fallout 4. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, Isaido is off work on Fridays. Work. Uh, I'll say that again. Off work on Fridays as work four tens each week. Four tens. I don't know what that means. Oh, you mean four ten hour shifts? Oh, right, okay. So get Friday off. That's all right. You get to do all your. I used to work shifts, and like it was always, always nice working weekends. And it's weird when you get days off during the week, but you suddenly realise um, it's kind of advantageous when you get a day off during the week. Because when you work weekends, you have to get up early on a Saturday and go and do all the stuff that requires you to go to like the bank or anywhere that's not going to be open on a Sunday, like the banks and stuff. You have to get all that sorted out in, in the UK and England here because banks used to close at like midday, one o'clock, two o'clock on a Saturday. And you have to run around like a, a, a blue bottomed fly, let's say, uh, trying to get all your banking and anything else done on a Saturday. Whereas if you get a day after on the week, you can just get up, pootle into town. Do all your banking, do all your other stuff that isn't open at the weekends. Come home again. There you go. Nice. Uh, where are we up to? Uh, hi, Chris. Much the same as normal Wendy, says Chris. Yeah, how are you doing, Chris? Hey, all joining the stream for the first time as I'm normally working, says Lee Stevenson. Thank you for coming in, Lee. You're more than welcome. Take a chair, sit down, get comfortable, but leave all your donuts and all your street waffles on that table over there because they need to go into my entire face. Uh, Rachel Modeler says, back to work on Monday in the garden centre since the restaurant can't open till May. I tell you what, I tell you what, I, I don't know which garden centre you work for, but if it's the one that's the same chain of garden centres that's my local, uh, we don't go there for plants and stuff, although we go and have a wander around. We go there um, just for the food. Basically, I take Mama Fox to two places. Mama Fox likes going to Tesco's because she likes the all day breakfast they do at our local Tesco's. I know I said don't mention the retailers, but these aren't model retailers. She likes the all-day breakfast to Tesco's, and the coffee's quite nice. Um, and it literally is all day. And she likes our local garden centre that begins with a W, but I won't mention it, but, you know. Um, she just likes the cake there. It's quite nice. So we haven't been there for ages, so we're looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to taking her back there at some point. Anyway, that went off on a tangent. So, yes, Bench and Belly, what are you working on? Doesn't have to be a model, although it's a model-related show, so it'd be good if it isn't. But if it isn't, don't panic. It can be anything creative, drawing, building shelves, diamond art, anything you want. You could be carving things into wood. You could be making wax idols, if you're a member of the hive, perhaps. It could be anything. So let me know what creative thing you're doing and what's in your belly. What have you had for your dinner? What are you going to have? Bench, a number of airfix, 172nd, 148 aircraft and master grade Zaku Cannon, says Idaho. Uh, is UK lockdown ending? A uh, bit, a bit, a bit. Some restrictions are lifting slowly, slowly. And UK is different because the Scotland is different to Wales, is different to England, is different to Northern. We've all got different. They're all doing it independently. So, you know, what may open up in Scotland may not open up in England or Wales. So it's all kind of varied. Uh, but e-models, I think retailers can open their doors to people again on the 12th. So e-models are opening up on the 12th. I have my enormous coffee, which is just shy of a litre. I have all my bits. Let's do some flipping work. Fox, is that near Green Lane School? I'm not really going to, I'm not really going to give my location out too, in much too detail. But yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. You know where I'm at. Uh, Widgeland Garden Centre, yes. Uh, Wendy Hickson says, Bench, Sigval, Prince of Slanesh, and Orc Flash gets going to open after four days. Uh, ooh, Sigval, the Prince of Slanesh. If you watch Duncan paint it, <coughs> he makes he does a really good job of it. Although he, he kind of ends up with the gold not looking that shiny. I could do a bit more shine on that gold. Needs a gloss varnish on the gold shininess. Yeah, as always, he does a good job. Right, anyway, shut up, Fox. Let's do some work. We've got to make the Crotula region today. It's widge and butt area we need to make. The, the, the in between the legs bit steady family friendly family friendly so i'm going to be watching i have my lenses on which allow me to see things my bionic lenses allow me to see things does mean the chat will go blurry so if you want to get my attention in chat please 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 either you can at model making guru because i'm signed in as model making guru to the chat or uh, you can put the comment in all in capital letters so that i have a chance of seeing it amongst the big blur of text or if you want to you can do a super chat by just clicking the dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window that puts your chat in a colored box and i can't possibly miss it then. and also also raises a little bit of money for e models as well so there you go 
So anyway, let's crack on. So I need some bits. Let me get me sprued and we'll cut something lost through. Right, so I need some crotchula bits. Now, if you look through the box of this, you basically get all these sprues of a bog standard Imperial Knight sprues. And this is the one sprue that comes for the Canis Rex that has the Laz Impulsor and the cockpit and the figures and some extra bits and bobs. So this is the one sprue that's different between this and the regular Knight Wood kit. So if you are buying an Imperial Knight, if you're not interested in making the Canis Rex, you can buy either. You can get the Canis Rex or the Knight Warden kit. You can both have all the same variants. But if you want a cockpit specifically, or if you want to make the uh, Canis Rex, or if you want the Lazen Pulsar, you have to get the Canis Rex kit. And I would just say, a little bit more expensive, but just go for the Canis Rex, because you get the dudes. Right crotch bits so we need let's have a look and see what we need we need i like the cop i'm looking forward to painting the cockpit it's going to be a nightmare to film painting that cockpit it's going to be an absolute nightmare to film it because it's tiny and pokey although i may just paint the back walls and side walls on camera i'm looking forward to painting the figure but again that's going to be tiny and pokey so i'm not sure how i'm going to film that but i'm hoping i'll figure something out during this particular uh, particular build and there's, there's the, uh, the the instrument panel i like that I've got to see if I can actually have the skill to paint things on these display screens. I might try and paint some little vector graphics or something. I don't know. I'll try it. I'll try it. Anyway, shut up, box. Do some flipping work. God. Right, so uh, 81 and 82 we need. I'll put them sprues over there. I don't need them. No, I'll put them over there. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these decals out because these decals are in the bottom of the box and they're getting all scraped up. I'll put the decals hidden in there there we go so get all my sprues i'm just organizing things the sprues are standing up there we go right now we can do some work so i want 81 and 82 let's get them first i'll have a look at chat in a second do 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 so i hope everyone is well and fine and dandy uh, I'm doing fine, thank you very much. I'm absolutely fine today. I've been busy working on filming the next episode of my Tabletop Trauma Centre series, my Lehman Russ paint job, which is a eBay rescues where I buy something on eBay and it's been really badly painted and then basically rescue it. At 67 and 66 I need. They're going to be on a different sprue, it's guaranteed. Uh, yeah, pretty much. What else do I need on this sprue? 84 and 83. There's 84. Get all the bits on I need on this sprue first. Yeah, so I, I, what I do in Tabletop Trauma Center is I buy a really, really badly painted Warhammer model or mini of some sort off the Ebays. I strip it down and repaint it, like without painting it. You know, something that's been painted with like a dead cat and half a potato, and I kind of repaint it. 83. You'd think 83 would be near. Oh, it's there. It is. Right in front of me. Simpleton. There we go. I've been working on that. Uh, but then not much else to report, really. Oops, ping. Uh, I need 67 and 66. I need sprues. If I suddenly go quiet, by the way, I do apologise. My microphone's noise cancelling is set. So if I turn away from the microphone, it can kind of silence me completely. Which is a bit of a bit of a pain, but... Uh, right, 67 and 66. These could be anywhere. Uh, 50, 40s. That's all. Okay, that's all going to be weapons. They do kind of gather the sprues together in groups. So that's all weapons. This is not all weapons. Uh, going off what the piece looks like, actually, is probably the. Usually the easiest way to find something. Oh, hang on, I'm throwing sprues everywhere. It's going to be one of them days today, I can see it. It'll be on the first sprue I had, you watch. Okay, that sprue is all torso bits. Not there, it will be. It'll, it'll totally be there, you watch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, what bits do I need? 67. Okay, I know what they look like. I've just got to find. 
There it is. It was on the first sprue that I had anyway. Right, I need to keep in mind that sprues all weapons. The other sprues all torso, and that's more weapons. How's that for a chainsaw? Look at the size of that. Oh, yeah. I'm being a bit waffly today, aren't I? I'll sort myself out in a minute. Right, 67 and 66, which were on the sprue that I had in my hand anyway to start with. It's always where you first looked. They always say you always find something something in the last place you look, but when it's a war, when it's a games workshop kit, you always find something in the first place that you looked when you go back to it after looking everywhere else. It is the order of things. So where's me mapped? Quick look at chat. Uh, la, 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 la. Is it a British garden centre radio model? Oh yes, it begins with a W and ends in Vale. It's just Y Vale, Y Vale Garden Centres. There you go. Try not to be too descriptive because I don't like to tell people where I actually am, obviously. So, but I think there's them all over the country. So, uh, where are we up to? Wizards in charge, relax mass restrictions where I am. Two weeks later, cases okay, so spikes as easy. I don't, don't. Uh, Dad reminds everybody to do lots of thumbs up on the video. Thank you very much. Benches, some Tamiya barrels for 40k scenery, and belly was BLT and bread pudding. Oh, yes, that's. That's bacon and bread pudding in the same meal. Ooh. Uh, I mean, that's different end of the same meal, but uh, uh, it's always the best. It's always the last place you look, says David Sanson, apart from Warhammer kits, because it's always the first place you look. But you have to look in the first place and then go all the way through all the other sprues and then go right back round to the first place. It's always the way it goes with Warhammer stuff. You have to go full circle. It's a bit like when you better half go shopping and, you know, as blokes, we know this because as blokes, we walk into a shop and we go, I want this, bang, buy it, done. Um, but there are there are those who they have to go through every single shop. And I've done it. I've been in that situation myself. You go around, you get dragged around every shop looking at, you know, there's something you're not interested in go around every single shop. And it's always when you get by the end of the day, you, you're tired. I mean, you're going through all the shops and it's now back to the first shop. It was the first thing that the person saw. And you're like, oh. Drives me nuts. Eww. The mysteries of life. You blokes, we're different. We go, I'm going to go into town. I'm going to buy X. You get on the bus or you get in your car, you get on the tram, whatever. You get on the transportation device. You go to the, sh you go to the first shop that you know sells X. You get X and you're done. There you go. That's the men's shopping experience. We're simple creatures. We're not we're not complicated creatures in any way. We're not, you know, we're not complex or we're fairly simple. We have simple needs, simple, simple processing equipment. We're just basically children. That's what those blokes are. Right, so we'll get all these nubulations off and then we'll do a bit of clean up. Oops, quite tricky to get to this one because the bits behind it. Always watch out for your bits behind. So yes, anyway, so not a lot to report for me. I've been working on my Lehman Russ. Uh, as I say, I will be starting this particular Canis Rex build up the paint series. We'll be filming it for models, but I am waiting on them to get a refresh of stock from Games Workshop, which has been delayed for obvious reasons. You know why it's been delayed. Getting resupplies from anybody at the minute is tricky uh, for any retailer. So, oops. If you are waiting to pick something up from eModels and it's been out of stock for a little while, if it's not on the website, it's probably just out of stock, whatever you're looking for. Uh, just be patient. Be patient. It's difficult for any retailers to get stock of anything right now. I know. I've been trying to get an Xbox One X for the last three months. An Xbox Series X. I had a moment of excitement today when, when I went to I went to the store from which I will buy it. And it had the option to put it in a basket. I'm like, oh, maybe they've got it in stock. No. It just had the op it just suddenly they've added the option to put it in your basket before it's just been like, yeah, coming soon, whenever we've not got it yet. They were teasing me and I was like, oh, I got excited and everything then. No, I'll get one kind of around about Christmas, I reckon. 2025. 
I can cope with my Xbox One X for now. I'm only playing Skyrim, Fallout, Borderlands 3. I'm not exactly missing out just yet. Now, I hate getting rid of nubs on curved surfaces. Curved. Curved. Towards. Because it's tricky. Uh, I shall use. Put my legs. I'll put my legs over there. Get out of the way, Gams. Uh, I shall use a file. I do, you don't normally use files, but I want to keep it nice and smooth. Now, you're not actually going to see this because this is the the sort of the the bit that the upper torso gloms onto. You have the, 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 the hips and the, the middle bit, the crotch area, and then the torso splunks onto that. So you're not actually really going to see this. But I'd still like to make it nice and neat. Now, to answer a question that nobody's asked, but that I'm sure one of you will, uh, I will not be magnetizing this or doing anything like that uh, for two reasons. I'm building it as Canis Rex, which just has a, a two set weapons anyway. Canis Rex has very specific weapons in law. As in L O R E, not law. Law uh, in the law for Cadis Rex, it has the Freedom Fist of Freedom, which sounds very American, and it has the Laz Impulsor, which uh, it's it's uh, Princeps Sir Hector Serbrin describes as a damn great laser. Describes that weapon as that. So uh, build, you build it with the cannon weapons, but also this is never going to be played in a game. It's, I'm building it for the guys at eModels. It's going to sit in their display cabinet and then eventually they might just sell it or auction it off. So there's no point in me magnetizing it for lots of options because it's never going to be anything other than a, a display a display queen, a cabinet queen. Uh, yes. Hope you can all see and hear me okay, by the way. I've been having a lot of issues lately when I'm doing live streams that everything comes out a bit dark. And no matter which settings i tweak on the camera software for like brightness or contrast or color balance or anything like that the darks come out really dark and when i preview it in my software it looks fine but when i watch the stream back it's a bit all oh, the darks are a bit dark and crushed so do let me know how it looks if it looks and sounds okay i have noticed that my microphone like i said before does kind of cut out any real softly spoken stuff like you won't hear this probably you might not hear that so do let me know how it looks and sounds anyway. Uh, Steve Ford said, you should try getting a PS5. Lol, took months, but we got one for our kid eventually. I'm an Xbox person through and through me. I've had Xbox since 2001. No PlayStation 5 for this one, I'm afraid. No, Xbox man, through and through. And the thing is, as someone that loves Bethesda games, and he's had an Xbox since 2001, yeah, I'm not getting a PlayStation. <laughs> I love I love Bethesda games. I feel bad for anybody with the PlayStation if uh, any of the big things get made Xbox exclusive. That should be interesting. Yeah. Coming up, Fallout Six Xbox exclusive. Oh, that's gonna smart. Now I've, I've always had Xbox. Uh, I have a network of friends on Xbox, so there's no reason for me to get PlayStation. I've had a PlayStation Three, and I've had a PlayStation. Well, not a PlayStation Four. I've had a PlayStation Three, and I've got a Sony Vita. Which I adore. There's nothing, nothing against PlayStation. I'm not, a, I'm not a fanboy of either. I've just always had Xbox. That's where my game library is. That's where my subscription goes. So I shall stick with Xbox. I just hope, right? This is what I just hope, though, that when I do eventually get a Series X. As you know, I do my Skyrim Saturday stream and I do my Fallout Friday stream when I'm not doing this. I just hope that when I get a Series X, I can load up Skyrim and carry on with the same saves. I probably will be able to. I hope anyway. But my big worry is I think they're going to release a remastered version of Skyrim for the Series X and probably for PlayStation 5 as well. I think they're going to uh, do a, a remastered version at some point the same way they released the special edition for xbox one playstation 4 i think they're going to remaster it again and do a special special edition which is you know got your hdr and other stuff in it and your 
ray tracing and things. I think we'll do that. And then I'll be torn because I'll, I'll, I'll get it because I want to have the nice looking visuals. But the last time they did that, they upgraded it from the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 version to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. You lost your saves. You, if you got the new version, you couldn't carry your saves over from the previous game. And it was like, OK, that's fine. I can start a new game. I don't mind. But as I've been streaming it for like the last year, I can't afford to suddenly stop where I'm up to and start a new game because nobody's going to want to sit and watch a year's worth of gameplay again that I've just been through. So it's a bit tricky at the minute because if, if that's the case, I'll either have to, as long as I can keep the saves, if the saves carry over to the to the, the Xbox Series X, if I keep the original version of the game that I've got, the, the special edition, that'll be fine. But then I'll have sadness because I'll be playing the spanky new version for my own personal gratification. But for the benefit of people watching my streams, I'll be playing the old version. And that'll be a shame. It'll still look great, don't get me wrong. It'll be a shame. Personally, I would love to see Skyrim with ray tracing. Oh! Moist. Maximum moist, that will be. I'll have a look at the chat in a moment. I'll just get these bits cleaned up. Yeah, so I've, I've no, nothing against PlayStation. Just I've, I've always been on Xbox. That's where my game library is. And I can afford precisely one subscription to a game service like Xbox Live or PlayStation Network. I can afford precisely one. So I might as well stick with the one I've had for 12 years. I think I've got 12 or 13 years tenure on Xbox Live, I think. It's about 2007 when I actually got Xbox Live. So... <laughs> doodle, doodle, doodle. I think that was when I first got broadband actually because I think up to that point I had dial up I know dial up and I've never really played online games before other than because when I got into gaming around about sort of 19 about 2000 1999 2000 we'd always had game consoles but I'm never really into it and then I played like a bit of Quake and then Medal of Honor Allied Assault on PC back in the day you know early late 90s and i got the bug and then mama fox got a playstation 2 so i played red faction and that was great and i played that half-life uh, playstation 2 version of half-life and that was great and then i got myself my first xbox in 2001 and i got into it from there basically um but other than trying a little bit of medal, medal of honor allied assault on dial-up multiplayer because at that point, I'd never played online multiplayer. I had no idea what PvP was or anything like that. And it was just like, oh, let's give it a try. I've got, I've got a dial-up. Let's give it a get. And it was terrible. It was terrible. It worked. It just about worked. But yeah, it, I got a few kills in. But my lord. Medal of Honor Allied Assault. On dial-up uh, dial internet. 56k modem. Oh, wow. I don't even think the speeds had numbers. What's your what's your internet speed? I don't know. M. I think it was so slow that they didn't even use numbers at that point. So there was yeah, they didn't have any need for online at that point. Uh, quite happily, because I didn't really use the internet much in those days. But then we used to play Halo as LAN. We used to go go around to my friend's house and take like two or three Xboxes and play LAN Halo, which is great. Uh, but then, you know, in about 2007, uh, I found myself potentially working from home for a job. I had to get a job and I found myself potentially working from home and it needed an internet connection. Like, you know, doing call centre work from home. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll get broadband. I may as well get broadband while I'm here then. Because I'll need it. And I got myself some Xbox Live as I now had broadband. In the 360 days. Right, that's them cleaned up. Let me uh, get the dust. Swig a coffee and have a look at chat. Um. Um, um. Let's have a look and see. Uh, will you be magnetizing this? Says Armed Brit. Oh, there you go then. Uh, no, because this is purely going to go, like I said, I don't know if you were in when I said this, because it's purely going to live in eModel's display cabinet and then they'll probably sell it or auction it off. And it's never going to get played on the tabletop. 
and like I say, you're not if I'm building it specifically as Canis Rex, so you don't swap weapons out anyway, but it's just gonna be built and glued into into a pose. Just for fun. If I was building it for my army, I would magnetize it. I've got a few more knights to build for my own army, but uh, uh my model works is clearly playing Scarim because he's just found carrots. Uh where I've lost the chat now. Where are we up to? Uh, Wendy says, I hope Gemma's doing better today, Chris, at Gross Models. Yeah, I hope Gemma's doing okay. Big hugs from me. Fox, cat girl, says ECI. Okay, cat girl, cat bloke. Either way, it's all Khajiit. Khajiit approves of all these different uh, John, uh, uh, genders of cats. Plus, if you're a cat for cat... See, when I say dude, it doesn't mean man. It means man or woman. When I say dude... Because I call... I've got some rubbish memory for names, and I call everybody dude, because I can never remember what people's names are. So I call men dude, and I call women dude. Dude just means person to me. So if you cat dude, also you have the advantage that all the characters say Akatosh terribly, apart from Khajiit, who say Akatosh, and that just sounds great. I like the I like the Khajiit voice. Uh, where are we up to? Applejack Sarah uh, says ECI to her. His belly, uh, and then says Sarah again. I think Sarah was supposed to be something else, like cereal, perhaps. <laughs> Eric to I'm catching up on the chat because I've lost my place. Uh, if I looked at we lived up north, I wouldn't want to tell people I live where I lived either, says Chris. Thank you very much. Uh, Lee Stevenson says the upside and downside of living with a really good bakery two minutes walk from home. Oh, yes. La, 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 la. I wouldn't worry about mentioning those garden centres there in liquidation. Oh, didn't didn't know that. Uh, you should try getting a PS5. Oh, we've done that one already. Uh, yeah, we used to live two doors down from an amazing curry place opposite an amazing pasta place. We put on two stone living there. Absolutely. Shot socking great shooty gubbin says armed Brit. Absolutely. The darks are a little dark, but could be me, although that black cloth might not help. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is, no matter what I do. If I look at my... Because I've got a preview running of the stream, it looks absolutely fine. But when I play it back, it'll be a bit darker. I don't know what it is. But it's weird. Do, 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 do. Uh, game pads, it says Mayhem Model. Looks, and I think he means Game Pass. I just got a tank load of Bethesda. Yeah, pretty much most of Bethesda, game, Bethesda games are now in Game Pass if you're on Xbox Live. Except, bizarrely, Fallout 3. Which is weird. Remaster incoming, perhaps? That'd be nice. Never had an online service till 360 in uni, says I'm Brit. Are we up to... Oh, Colin Zim, Colin the Festa 67's workshop. Another one of your lovely, lovely huggable mods. Give him a big hug and say hello. Colin Zim, welcome, Colin. How you doing, my friend? Uh, where are we up to... I've lost track of chat. That was a joke, Fox says on Brit, but I don't know what, what was the joke. I do miss a lot of the chat, I'm afraid. Am I actually in live chat or top chat? I mean, oh, I'm, well, it's not up. I'm in top chat for a start, so I've missed half the chat. Oh, well. Uh, la, la, la. I was referring to the length of time it takes to get them, as you said, you're having trouble getting to the new Xbox. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Edward Lenn is in. Welcome, Edward. Hello, my friend. Squishies are okay, I hope. Uh, Candy Graphamon goes in. Foss likes that. Foss? Who's Foss? The guy that painted spaceships. Last Saturday, last Sunday, you asked for a device to ensure centered drill holes in gun barrels for miniatures. I made a device this week that does exactly that. Busy now. Details later. Cool. Awesome. Is it somehow contrived from a pickle holder? The, you know, the thing that you put in the jar to pick up pickles and it's got like... Yeah. <laughs> Send me information on that. Be cool. Uh, right, we're up to chat. I will miss a lot of the chat. I do apologize because obviously I need to get some work done. So, yeah, if you do ask me a question or need to get my intention in chat, please put it in capitals or use the super chat. But if I do miss your comment, please don't be upset. I'm, 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 I'm trying to build and um, things at the same time. Don't need that yet. Put that over there. Let's build a crotch full of crotchular goodness. But I'm not going to sing that copyright and all that. So let's get this assemblated. This goes there like there, you see. Nice and straightforward, nice and simple. Not a particularly complicated build Imperial Knight. In all honesty, if you if you're dipping your toe in Warhammer and you're not 
familiar with the brush painting the imperial knight is probably one of your best but it's not cheap but it is by far one of the easiest warhammer kits to build and it's an absolute doddle to paint although i've not painted the canis rex color scheme yet and that's a little more tricky because it's metallics but generally speaking imperial knights with a very limited color palette can be one of the easiest and fastest things to paint you can paint them a lot faster than you think we glue that we're going to give it a second and then squeeze it together using it together so the glue can squidge out some of the melted plastic and seal the gap find the gap am i up on camera in, in shot or not in shot i've moved the camera now didn't i and it's all in the wrong place now where are we where's the there's the middle about there there we go it's about you can see squishy now oh in the middle there we go let's squeeze these together just to get this glue scrooching out it'll just make get rid of that seam line a lot easier later on Although putting glue in the gap does actually help Fox, just so you know. Squishtacular. Get some clampertons ready. They might come in handy. Me. And no. That one's rubbish. Don't like that one. Don't like it. Better. There we go. Clamp tackle on. Glue on the inside just to seal the deal. Yes, it's also one of those kits that's rife for magnetization. Um, a bit like the Bane Blade, because you get like sort of seven or eight in one, you can build so many different variants of the Imperial Knight in the one kit. A lot of people like to magnetize them so you can swap and change the weapons out and the, and the bits and bobs. So instead of having to buy like three Imperial Knights, you could build one and just keep swapping it around. Um, so it is, it is quite a good kit for that. Uh, now I need to give that a minute to glue so I can glue the other bits on. So have a quick look at chat. Lindipple says bold. La, 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 la. Chris says, I've been running both top and live chat for several of my recent streams. It makes no difference. They are always both exactly the same. The only difference is in top chat, if it sees a comment that it thinks might be a bit ropey, it will hide it. Uh, not like when somebody says something and it, it it puts it in grey for the moderators, but in some in it will automatically process the chat. And if it thinks something's a little bit ropey, it might hide it and just not show it if you're in top chat. If it's all nice, nice, clean, fluffy bunny comments, it's probably fine. <coughs> Uh, but like if somebody puts a swear word in chat, for example, it might not show that. Don't put a swear word in chat, please. But it might not show that on top chat, but it might on live chat. It's completely uncensored on live chat. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, Candygram says something. Because then... Oh, the magnetising comment was posted when you first said it. I get you. You were just joking. I've got you. Painting little dudes is not so easy, Fox. Eh, it is if you've got some nice brushes and I've and you've got I've got nothing I can show. Uh, 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 see if I can get something out and show you. I don't have any individual little dudes to wave around, but uh, if I show you if I can get it out to a matron, get the dust off it. That's the thing I did for the E-Models uh, Christmas special build. It's a, a toon tank that I did up as a Cadian uh, tank with a Warhammer dude. It's a bit dusty. Uh, it's painting little dudes isn't so bad, actually. As long as you've got a steady hand, a good eye, good magnifiers. And it, the, the important thing is the brushes. If you've got a brush with a nice point on it, you can actually get them to look pretty good. Now, I do know the guy in uh, this, the Sir Hector figure in this, has got a very intricate armour. I know you can't really see that because it's it's completely out of focus. Um, I focus it in for you a bit better. That's what you'll get wobbly camera for a minute, I'm afraid. Yeah. 
it's going to be it's through a crappy webcam so it doesn't look brilliant but you know you get the oh god it is dark isn't it you get the idea it's kind of uh it's all about your brush work if you've got a good brush that's the that's the trick put the focus back again where's my focus tool focus tool there's a focus tool uh focus back again all right but it's one of those things that you know you, you can't just do it instantly without thinking it, it's it's not necessarily a highly skilled thing painting little tiny figures that color looks wrong it does look wrong doesn't it um can't tweak anything because i can't see exactly what you're seeing I'll just have to survive. Apologies if it does seem a bit dark. It's not actually dark, but hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Right. Bugging me now. Let me. Put my hand there. It's going to go horribly overexposed. I know it's going to be horribly, horribly overexposed now. So if you get all big, like glowy white patches where my hands are, let me know nightmare doing i'll tell you it's a nightmare doing live streams it really is and they get them looking good and be quite tricky if they look a bit blue hey whoopee i get a decent color balance oh that'll do <sighs> uh, yes so the trick with figures is um, uh, good brushes with very fine points but with a good reservoir if you get a tiny tiny brush that's like three bristles you're going to be reloading the brush every five seconds the trick is to get a nice brush that's got a point to it and very fine but that's got a bit of a bulb of brush behind it where the paint can be held as in the reservoir uh, now games workshop brushes are quite good but they're not the best that you can get do have a look through the store through the model store uh, there's plenty of good brushes in there but that's the trick painting something small it's kind of not logical it's not instinctively logical but the trick is to not paint with the biggest uh, the smallest brush you can find if you've got to paint something tiny go with not the smallest brush you can find but the biggest biggest brush you can feasibly paint it with if that makes sense it's all about having a reservoir of paint thinning thinning your paints a little bit also helps and uh, magnifying visors are an absolute must it's just patience it's just patience and, and and go slowly but if there is one major piece of advice i can give you know what that piece of advice is it's thin your paints always be thinning your paints uh, i can't recommend strongly enough that you have a wet palette that's the wrong one right well there we go that's better uh, either buy yourself a wet palette or make yourself a wet palette But it also depends, and it depends on the paints as well. Don't forget, if you're painting with horrible paints or paints not suited for brush painting, then trying to paint a little tiny figure is going to be even worse. Like, for example, if I'm painting a, a little figure or if I'm doing any kind of brush painting, I'm never, ever going to use Tamiya paints because they are not designed for or suited for brush painting at all. They're alcohol-based alcohol -based lacquers and they're not really blendable or anything like that. You can't use a wet palette with them. I wouldn't use them. It's, 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 it's not, I'm not going to say it's easy because it requires, you know, you've got to, you've got to get some experience in, but it's not impossible for anyone to do. Anyone can paint the figure. Just a case of using the right tools. If you try and paint a tiny little figure, but using a brush the size of a house, it's going to end poorly for you. But again, like I say, it's not necessarily about having the tiniest brush you can find. More about the reservoir of paint. I actually enjoy painting the figures. It's I don't enjoy filming it because that's quite tricky. Painting a figure by himself or herself is actually quite fun and pleasurable, but when you're trying to film it, that's when it gets a bit tricky because it's not the easiest thing to film because I tend to get close up and personal with them so I can see with my old man eyes because I is an old man. Oops. 
That's why I've not had so far any like how to paint little tiny dudes videos on my channel or on here because it's the practicality of being able to film it. I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. And hopefully by the time it comes to painting Sir Hector, we'll have figured out a good way to do it. That goes on there like that, you see? Nice and simple. Not complicated at all, this one. But the thing is with Warhammer as well, keep in mind that the, the, the over-the-top crisp details do also help quite a lot. Because they're not like realistically... Well, some of them are. So they're not realistic humans, but a lot of the detail is exaggerated and raised up. It does make brush painting, because they are designed with brush painting in mind. It does make brush painting a little easier. Yep. That's that on there. What are we doing? Uh, la, 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 la. Let's have a look at chat. Uh, has anyone here transferred their Citadel paints to drop a bottle, says David Sanderson. You can do. I can't be bothered, to be perfectly honest. Um, but it does make life, if you want to airbrush them, it does make life a lot easier. And it's a little less wasteful if you're using a wet palette, because you can get a little drop or two rather than to get a brush full. Uh, but you can do. I just can't be bothered. Or too lazy. <laughs> Look. Mayhem model work says, Jeff, been industrious with a center point drill for cannons? Guns, says Fester. What are they? It's gun. Uh, uh, no, you have to paint its visor like its eyes, said Leonard Leonard. Again, it, com it comes down to, um, really down to brush control and, and, and fine detailed brushes. With his visor, let's see if I can find it. Hang on. That is a little small. You won't be able to see it probably, but... Uh, where is his helmet? Okay, you can't. Okay, you can't see it because his head's side on. But on his helmet here, I'll show you on the. It might be easier. Uh, you can't really see it on there either, to be perfectly honest. There, can't find it. Okay, here he's got his helmet on. The, when he's in the in the cockpit, he has a helmet on there. And there's like a really thin, a bit like a Cylon eye. There's a visor and it's blue with a white bit in the middle. It's, it looks like it'd be a nightmare to paint because it's this tiny little slit there. And if you'll see, but if you have your paints the right thickness and you've got a very fine point on your brush, it's actually not that bad to do. Um, not that hard it really does come down to the brushes you use and the keeping the paints nice and thin because you can easily that's a recessed strip so you can easily fill it with thinned blue paint just touch it to the gap and it'll go boop and fill the gap and then for the white bit once the blue's dried you're just using a very fine brush and just dragging it because it's a curved surface like that it's basically uh, how can i explain it you see this you see this night helmet here You've got this visor here it's like imagine that was just a straight visor with no bit in the middle you just you'd get your very fine brush in and get some thin blue paint and touch it in and it would fill and then you get white or your white color very fine point in your brush and you just drag it across the top so it's going like that and that's how you'd fill it it's it's not not complicated but it does require some a little bit of coordination a little bit of patience but it really does come down to thinning your paints and good brushes you'll suddenly find I mean, I've just got some brushes recently that I can't really talk about because they're not sold by anybody's, but they're not sold by anybody apart from the manufacturer. Um, but they've really upped my paint game massively. Just simply by being good quality brushes. It's quite bizarre. If you're painting with a brush that's got a profile, like the, the bristles are just like, you know, flat. If you're trying to paint fine detail with um, something like that, not going to happen. You want a brush that can have, you know, uh, you want a brush that can have fine point like that, but also a reasonably sized bulb at the back of the point. So you can have the paint in it, the reservoir of paint behind it. 
I'm not having to reload that brush all the time because it's holding enough paint in the in the bulb of the brush. But it can go to a very fine. I don't know if you can see it. It can go to a very fine point. So I can't, can't tell you what these brushes are because I say they're they're not available. But for me models, uh, I've mentioned them on my channel, obviously. Uh, but there's plenty of different good brushes out there. Windsor and Newton Series Sevens. I think you models have those in stock, or they, they can get them in stock. They are very very good brushes. There's plenty of good brushes out there. It really does come down to your brushes. If you're using cheap, crappy brushes, you're going to get a cheap, crappy paint job, unfortunately. Right. I need to leave this to set for a bit so I can fill the seam in, which is a bit of a pain. Because what can I work on next? Uh, I've got to build some little widgets. Widgets! Well, let's get some little widgets built. I'm going to have a swig of coffee. I don't, of course, paint eyes <clears throat> because I can't paint eyes. I'm useless at painting eyes. Even I haven't got the skills for that. Um, so, yeah, any any recessed detail like his visor on his helmet, it's, it's not so bad. It really is a case of, like, imagine that was his helmet and this recess here. I can't point. Imagine this recess here it went from there to there and just stopped. You get your thin blue paint, very fine brush, and you just touch it. And it would naturally fill that recess, let that dry, then get your white and you just run it across like that. Very fine point. The same way you do teeth. If somebody's got their mouth open, you just tiny amount of paint on the brush and just run it across the, the surface. You'll see when I paint it, hopefully, if I can film it. Uh, as a guard painter, it's base dry brush wash equals good enough, says Arm Brit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you're building like a a hundred blob troops they get a real basic paint job just enough to see them from four feet away on the table like that kind of figure i showed you a minute ago is kind of a basic paint job it's not like a super detail I'm, you know i'm not the best at painting figures but i'll give it a go right so we need to assemble these little bits so i may as well do those while i'm waiting for that to dry and these are 68 and 70. 68 yeah, that's a stick. 8 and 70. Mm -mm -mm. If you're wanting to get practice painting figures, um, well, I've said this before, you want to get practice painting anything, any games workshop stuff, or any kind of miniatures, or just practice brush painting, then your best value for money for a test build uh, is the Land Speeder Storm. The 40k Land Speeder Storm. And it's that specific kit because it comes with. Well, you know what? I'm not going to use that black thing because that black thing gets a bit. The Land Speeder Storm, it's a vehicle and there's like six dudes in it. Six. Space Marine dude, but they're like commando, so they've got open helm. They're not got like full Space Marine armor. They've got exposed heads and stuff. So, and it's like nineteen pound or something. It's, it's dirt cheap, and for what you get, you get a vehicle with six figures. It's it's a massive steal. It's cheaper than buying a set of five dudes, basically. Although, there is, if you want a real cheap, if you just want to have practice painting figures. Uh, the real cheap sort of little set of Cadians, I think it's like you get three or four Cadians and it's something like six or seven pound. You get four or five little dudes and they're just little simple one or two piece figures. They're not complicated, but it's three or four little dudes that you can practice on and use as test pigs only for a few quid. And they're all like, you know, uh, helmeted, but like not full face helmets. It's just like, you know, like a crash helmet. So you can see their face and they've got expressions, they've got uniforms. And you can use them as great test pigs. If you want a couple of dudes, get yourself the Cadian set. Have a look on the store. Um, might be like two or three dudes. I'm not quite sure. It's usually about five or six quid. But if you want practice with the vehicle as well, the Land Speeder Storm is your best bet. I've said to people before, you know, what's a good starter kit for somebody just getting into Warhammer? Land Speeder Storm. It gives you a vehicle. It gives you. It gives you experience of land of. Uh, building the warhammer kit it gives you experience of building warhammer vehicle kit it gives you experience of painting figures because there's six of them in there 
It's only like 19 quid because it's not got a high point value in game. It's not expensive at all. I'm not, that's the rough price. I don't know how much e-models I've got it for off the top of my head. Because obviously e-models uh, have a lower RRP. They sell under RRP. You're getting, I'm assuming it's less, it's 10%. E-models by default has a 10% off RRP process, but it, it might be a little more. I'm not sure. Have a look. But yeah. If you want to practice on figures, Cadence is your best bet. A little set of Cadence for a few quid. Or the land speed of storm. You get to practice everything then. And it's a nice little kit. It's a great little vehicle. There are other ones out there, but it's the land speed it's only the land speed of storm that comes with six figures. Other ones just come with like a pilot and a driver and they're in space marine armor, so it's not quite the same. Little pistony things. We'll get these built up and glued together first and then we'll see if we can go back and clean up that seam line on the on the crotchy bits often you get to say crotchy bits on a live stream or ever really clean up your crotchy bits put that together is that gonna I can clean that when it's glued together got a little piston assembly here I'm gonna if I glue this together, I'm gonna to have to wait for this to clean up to set as well, so I can clean it. So I'm gonna do, you know, like I always say, glue cylinder things together and then get rid of the nubs. So you keep the curve. This is tiny anyway, but if I do this, then I've got this to wait for while I'm waiting for that to dry. And the whole point of doing this bit is so I can quickly get this done. Um, so I can actually hold it together and just quickly smooth away the nub. And then I can sort the seam line later. We glue together. A bit of a doohickey. A little pistony thing. Oh, but then it comes apart. Fantastic. Thanks, Obama. There we go. Such a glue. Make sure I don't get any thumbprints on it because that would suck. But yeah, figure painting is one of those things because until I made. Well, put it this way. Until I painted the, f the first Warhammer kit I did with figures was a, was the Tau Piranha. But the first thing I did with actual you know figures with faces was the Land Speeder Storm. And it was my first real experience of Citadel paints. And up until that point, if you ask me, can you paint figures or can you brush paint? I'd be like, no, 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 no. Can't brush paint. Can't paint figures. I'm rubbish. I suck. It's rubbish. But well, that's because I've been trying to paint with Tamiya paints for many years, and I've not known otherwise. I hadn't figured that out, and I'd, I'd restricted myself over many years of trying to brush paint with Tamiya paints and failing miserably, and thinking it was my fault I didn't have the skills. It was only oh, knocking the camera. It was only when I um tried out some Citadel paints for the first time and some brush painting because you know I watched how to paint videos and i'd be like wow i could do this this is interesting because i've never even i never even heard i knew of them but i would never even really heard of citadel paints or anything like that i knew of warhammer 40k but i never really looked at it in any way shape or form so when i watch these like you know the duncan painting videos and stuff like that and i'm like this looks like real i need to i need to try this i need to get some of these paints and the kit and just try it and it opened my eyes because I suddenly realized that for many years I've been I had been firm in my knowledge that I could not brush paint and that I could not paint figures. I had countless Tamiya 135th vehicle figures poorly painted to convince me of that. And it's only when I got myself a decent brush, or a decent few brushes and actual paints that were, had brush painting in mind i.e the citadel paints and then later the viejo paints only when i got the right tool and the right paints and i i took influence from you know say the duncan videos and stuff just to learn how to brush paint because i'd never really because i'd sucked at it using tummy of paints i'd never really learned how to do it properly so I've never really invested the time in how to brush paint figures. 
So the moment I did that, I got myself good brushes, good paints, and gave myself a basic understanding of at least a simple way to paint figures. Not the best way, but as a starting point, the sort of the standard GW base shade, a couple of highlights, is certainly a good starting point that you can work from. Uh, once I got myself once I got myself decent brushes and decent paints, I tried painting that land speeder storm. I'll show you. I'll show you. Some of you have seen it before. See if I can get it out without it exploding. It may fall off its stand and be destroyed, but we'll find out. Again, excuse the dust. This was my first ever brush painting including figures. I'd never before, and I, I know it looks terrible on a live stream, so ignore the fact it looks terrible on a live stream. But I'd never painted figures before, apart from trying, you know, 135th with Tamiya stuff, and they were all garbage. There's so much dust on that, and they were all garbage. So when I painted these, I actually enjoyed it. Must be some sort of on there. Lots of dust. I actually enjoyed painting them. Now I've come a long way in the last two or three years since I did that. But I'm still not a you know, brilliant painter, but I've, I've got the hang of it. And it's just a case of get yourself a good brush and the good tools, and it's a place to start. And I think that's, is that dust on there or is that something else? Oh yeah, there's a good healthy, oh, there's a healthy foot and a half of dust on that. I thought the varnish had frosted over, but it's actually dust. <laughs> it's been in the cabinet. Um, but there's the if you see the visor on that dude there, Edward. I don't you can't see it because it's on the webcam. But that visor there on that dude's exactly the same. The little recess visor. All I did over here, all I did was quite literally fill it with some very thin white paint, and then run some very thin clear blue paint into it, and it gave that glowy look. It's it's that visor on um, on Canis Rex on the pilot. If I paint it white underneath, because it's that shape, it's curved like this. If I fill it with a thin white paint first, so it fills the recess, and then do a blue shade like, um, uh, uh, what's the blue one? If I then put, say, Drakenhof Nightshade in there, or one of the bright blue colours like Baharoth Bruce Blue Thin, and I'll show it on camera. Fill it with white paint so it paints the whole thing white. And then when you put the blue wash or shade in, the blue will come to the edges here. It'll go like that, but it'll leave the white shown in the middle. That's another way of doing it, using shades and washes. Right, quick look at chat while those are gluing. Uh, I, might, um, I might whiz through the chat a little bit. Uh, Armbrit asks, Fox, you use heavy metal style on Jidwee Minis. A, I'm nowhere near as good as heavy metal. But B, I kind of have my own slight style. It's kind of a slightly cartoony style. Um, it's very similar to GW, but it's kind of a mixture of the GW simple style, like, you know, base, shade, layer, 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 and a mixture of my own experience of painting stuff. Like, I'm working on a Lehman Russ at the minute, and it's it's not even it's not even finished yet, but you get the idea. I like go for kind of like slightly... In fact, that looks terrible on camera. That looks absolutely awful. My, right, let me set my settings. Let me put it on here. That looks horrible. I don't know what's going on. I really don't know what's happening. I do apologise. The picture quality is dark and horrible. It's like almost one of my lights has turned off, but it hasn't. Something's not quite right. Um, yeah, it's kind of a slightly cartoony style. It's not. I've not finished painting any of this yet. This is all half done, but it's it's not heavy metal style. It's it's kind of a mixture of realistic and lazy and GW style and making it up as a go along kind of style. So, yeah, put that back over there. I'm just show and tell today, isn't it? Right, I really don't know what's going on with the visuals today. I do apologize, folks. It's not. Try something else. Let me just uh, brighten this up a little bit. Nope. How's that looking? Is that looking any better? A uh, quick test for my visuals. I don't know. Hey, when it comes to camera settings, you can get fed up of it after a while and it just becomes depressing. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm nowhere near good enough for every metal style, but I, I kind of take a lot of influences. Uh... Mm -hmm. um, just taking a comment out. Don't be offended, but just please don't mention other retailers in the chat. Thank you. Uh, transferred miners, the Games Workshop bottles didn't fit into my paint rack, says Lee Stevenson. Yeah, I've got a paint rack that's actually designed for uh, GW size. It's the uh, Hobby Zone one. And it also is the right size for GW pots. And also, because it's the same size, it's also a perfect size for the Viejo metal colours. Same size pots. Uh, where are we? I've painted eyes, my advice. Don't, it's not worth it, says the Rage Model. I don't do eyes. I just use washes. Because you're never going to see it that close. I don't have the skills. I'm, I'm kind of a... My style you could describe perhaps as slightly impressionist. I'm not trying to go for photorealistic. I'm trying to go for... It's a bit like an impressionist painting. It's, it's a suggestion of face or skin or eyes, whatever. You know, I'll paint... I'll paint the figure and instead of painting eyes on this kind of heroic scale, I'll just use the shades in the recesses to suggest that there's an eye in there because like i said this last week if you look at most photographs of people when they're not deliberately looking at the camera and they're not right that close you don't always see eyes in there you just see shade where the eye socket is so i wouldn't sweat it too much if it's a character that's a bit different i'll still just try and get around it but the beauty of this kind of stuff is a lot of the times you can get around it by giving them helmets. Then you don't have to even think about eyes. Oops. We'll just see if we can scrape away the seam line now. Remember, I filled it out with the glue a little bit when I squished it together. So now what I can do is just smooth that little bloop of glue because it makes a little bead of glue. Smooth the little bead of glue away. And hopefully it leaves us with a nice smooth surface that we don't then have to go ahead and fill because I'm completely lazy and if I can avoid using any kind of fillers I will because seriously can't be bothered that's an easy way to do something you should always take the easier way now that looks like a little panel line so I might well, should we try and I might smooth it away it might not be the kind of gap I can get rid of mm. oh yeah there we go I will happily admit I'm a, I'm a lazy modeler. As in, I'm impatient for results and I can't be sitting there doing something for hours and hours and hours. If there's no way to do something just as good with a lot less effort. And I'm not ashamed to say that because it means that I can find quick and speedy ways to do things. And that's handy for me because if I can find a quick and speedy way to do something, it means it's easier for me to teach it to someone and it's easier for someone to learn. So I'm always on the lookout for fast, quick ways to do something that can give a great result. Because I'm not going to teach someone, you know, if I'm going to teach someone how to paint a figure, for example, I'm not going to teach them how to do it like how someone would do it in the GW painting studio for the box art. Because that requires them to have a certain level of skill already and to understand how to do glazes and so on. And also because I can't paint to that level anyway. I'm gonna I'm aiming my stuff at people who haven't got a lot of experience. I'm aiming mine at the beginners and the starters, the ones who want to learn to paint like this, that like you know, paint something because they don't know how. But I'm never gonna teach like how to paint something to golden demon standard. That's not that's not my thing and that's not what I can do. I'm always gonna teach you to paint it to a good standard that looks fantastic, but using slightly less complicated methods than you might think. Because I've found simpler, easier ways to do things that are more beginner friendly. So what I'm doing here is I literally when I glue these together, I squeeze them out. The plastic melted in between and splooged out. All I'm doing now is filing it away or scraping it away with my Citadel mold line removal tool. Which does the job very nicely. It's easier than using fillers, 
but it gives you for small gaps it gives you exactly the same result see but because i'm lazy it's my preferred way if i wasn't lazy i would have learned how to do it with fillers and putters uh, fillers and putty and that's what i would teach but i am lazy i'm always on the i'm always got my little weasel senses going for some way to do it better faster Sanding stick and sanding sponge. Hang on. Uh, la, 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 la. Right, I'm going to have to use something slightly illegal here. You'd have to use a sanding sponge that e-models don't sadly sell, but I need to because I haven't got a sanding sponge that's the right roughness. So, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm always on the lookout for easier ways to do things but i also like i've said before i get bored very quickly and i hate getting bored in the middle of a project because it's the worst thing in the world so if i can find a less tedious way to do something that will also help me make sure i don't get bored halfway through you haven't seen this sandy sponge you haven't seen me use this at all it's not there you can't see it not there nothing to see here move along there you go So I've not had to sit here and wait for putty to dry or I've not had to sculpt putty to match these little shapes. I've just literally glued it together and then 20 minutes later, half an hour later, I can go in and just clean it up. Get rid of the bit in the middle. I can use my scribing tool to just reform a little bit in the middle. I like to imagine this as some kind of like rubber sleeve housing over the joints like you get on a gear stick. I've kind of smoothed that away a bit, so I need to just rescribe it a little bit. Yeah, I, I have no interest in teaching to a professional level because that's not where my, my passions lay. My interest is teaching beginner level stuff. How to get good results without having necessarily 30 years of experience or three golden demons on your shelf. Or slayer swords. Because there's always a need to teach people at that level. But that's the kind of thing that, you know, when you're looking at that skill of painting, you know, how to paint to a competition winning standard, the people that do that kind of know how to do it anyway. It's kind of, they've, they've been through all the learning steps. You're not going to teach a professional how to do what they know, they've learned how to do. To get to that point, you have to learn all the basics to start with. You, know, you can't just wake up one day and suddenly know how to do glazing and such so i i don't really get any enjoyment from that and i don't have the skills anyway i much prefer to teach first first principles first basics i want to give people a foundation because there's so many different ways of doing things there's no right and wrong but I want to give people the first foundation principles so they can say, right, now I've painted this figure and it's, it's a competent paint job. Now I can go off and look at how other people do it and learn more techniques, take it beyond this initial first principles of skill level painting. That's what I do. I, I give them the foundation for them to then go off and learn. Because that's where my skill level is anyway. I, I've never said I'm a good painter. I'm still I'm still at sort of beginner level, I suppose. But I have a certain impressionistic style, as you could call it, perhaps. No one would accuse an impressionist painter of painting a realistic image. But it's it's pleasing and it works. Same with me. I'm not like some amazing, say, armor builder that sits there and spends a week painting rain drips on a tank i mean those that do it it looks fantastic and you can't knock it nor should you but i don't have the patience or skill for that but i have a slightly more slightly more looser not cartoony style but more informal style and i think that's why i fell for warhammer and miniature painting 
because miniature painting really works with that kind of style. Whereas if you're if you're building real world armor or you know whatever, you kind of want to go for a realistic simulation as possible as to the you know if you're building like you know World War II tanks or you know, my friend Scott who builds it Israeli Defense Force tanks all the time, forever. You know you go for a realistic look because you're making something that's real. But with miniatures, they're they're made up nonsense, but they also lend themselves to that slightly looser painting style. I liken it to to uh, look at concept art for video games. You look at say, go and look at some of the original concept art for Destiny or whatever game it is, where they've always got this beautiful, almost like brush painted artwork, but it's not. It's all digital, but it's all loosely painted, and you get the. They've not gone for realism. They've gone for here's a bloke with his cloak flowing around, and there's a dragon in the background, and it's all very loosely painted, and that's 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 kind of. If you look at some of the artwork for things like Hearthstone or, you know, Magic the Gathering, some of the artwork looks like miniatures. Look at some of the fantasy stuff. The artwork itself looks like the way miniatures are often painted. And it's really cool. That's the kind of style I go for, that loose style. That's got a bit of a... It's a little bit of visual mould gap that I can see. So I'm going to try and... It's tricky to get to, which is a... And that's the other thing, of course. Painting is very subjective. Objective, objective. Painting is very subjective. Like any kind of art, you create your own, you find and create your own style, your own language, your own, uh, you know, um, selection of your own dictionary of styles and, and, and visual phrases. And I don't want to tell someone how to paint to a certain, in a certain way. Like I said, if I give someone, I would much rather give someone a basic understanding and the tools to go off and find their own individual style than I would teach them how to paint to a golden demon level or to a heavy metal standard or something like that. I'd much rather, because, you know, it's like, it's like teaching someone how to write music. You want to teach them the principles of composition. You want to give them the principles. You know, the basics of how music goes together, of composition, what works, what doesn't. But you don't want to write the songs for them. They have to then take the, the principles they've learned and create their own language, their own lexicon, their own style. So I can give them the basics and I'll teach them to a basic level, but it's up to them then. I can show you how to really simply paint a figure or a car or a vehicle or whatever in such a way that it's you know passable on the table but it's up to the person then they want to take that further to find their own ways of doing it that's where that's where my zen is for doing all this for my stuff and the e-model stuff i want to get people started i don't even know what i was talking about i've kind of wandered off on this subject now for about 10 minutes and i've lost my thread so i assume i had a point at some point but now i'm just happily talking about uh, stuff there's people out there that, there's probably people in the chat that are vastly superior painters to me i don't deny it i'm not i'm not i never say i'm a professional i'm a professional insofar as i get paid for doing what i do in various ways but i'm not a professional insofar as the skill level of my work i think that's i hold that up to the light i can still see a seam line but I think that's more distressed plastic than actual seam line. When you're cleaning up gaps and things, you have to keep in mind sometimes what you're looking at is just where the, the plastic's gone like grey or whatever because it's been stressed and scratched and scraped. And you, you get an instinct for what will disappear under the primer coat. You don't have to get too insane with your cleanup because a lot of this will disappear under the primer coat. And of course, nobody's ever going to see under there, really, because you can have a banner hanging down, all kinds of bits and bobs. But I still want it to be good. Now, there is a bit I can't get to, which is in here. This little recess bit in here, I can't get in there. 
I'm going to try and see what I can do with the scribing tool. I might not be able to do much. I may just have to put like a dark wash in there just to hide, darken it down. Sometimes when you've got a, a seam line like that or a glue mold line or something, and it's in a recess and you can't get rid of it, sometimes it's better just to hide it. If there's no practical way to get rid of it, hiding it with a dark wash, say a dark matte ink or something, just makes it look like a recessed dark panel. And of course, because it's dark, it's harder to see a little raised detail where the little gap might be or the, the glue line. Right, let's put that there. We'll have a quick look at chat. I'll clean off my board. I think. What are we doing in chat? That was a big long waffle by me, wasn't it? Yay. Uh, la 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 la. Biggest mate, people. Biggest mistake. Hey, Muse, Muse is in. Uh, biggest mistake people make with eyes is the white. You never put your white paint. Yeah, never do white and black because nobody has white and black eyes. You use yellowy shades and you use fleshy tones. And you. The best way to paint eyes is not to paint eyes. Not on this scale of figures. Not on you know. Not even anything. Land speeder storms or pants on the tabletop says uh, says Armbr Exactly. But I'm I'm aiming this at. I'm talking to people who are trying to learn how to paint. Not playing the game if you just want a test pig that doesn't cost you a massive amount of money and you want to learn how to paint stuff even if you're not whether you have no intention of because some people do get these things to build and paint i haven't played a game yet so if you just want to learn how to paint or if even if you're going to play on the tabletop and you're maybe not even going to be imperial guard get one anyway it's dudes it's faces and it's a vehicle it's good practice uh... Guard kits are ancient. KD has a 2004 and Kata Chan's like 96 and 97. Again, true, but I'm telling people, I'm, I'm suggesting things for people to practice painting on. I wouldn't say go out and buy an Imperial Knight just to pray, practice painting the little figure or, you know, a 35 quid of whatever, but just for the basic thing to paint on practice. If you want to practice painting Games Workshop figures, go for the cheapest ones you can find. Is the best bet. Uh, no wonder I couldn't get Tanya to work with the brush law. Yeah, it's garbage. It's not designed for that. It's alcohol. When you brush over it, it balls up. It's not not water based. You can't use it on a wet palette. You can't. You can't. Just don't. Don't brush paint with Tanya. I mean, little details like little bits you paint, but anything you know, just don't. <laughs> don't do it. None of my techniques worked, and I couldn't work out why. Yeah, because it, again, it's alcohol based. They're called acrylics, but they're not the alcohol based lacquers. Uh, chat just vanished. Where are we? Uh, David Sanderson's going to go and think about transferring paints. He's got to go. Unfortunately, my other half is moaning at me. Oh, come on. Please can't David stay. Please, please. We like him and he's a lovely bloke. Please let him stay. Please, 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 please. David's other half. Please, please. He's probably already gone. It was worth a try. If you let him stay, it'll make you a nice cup of tea. There you go. And it won't be awful. Uh, Mayhem says professional. What? Why? Yeah, I'm not professional. Uh, where are we? La 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 la. I have tea, not this coffee nonsense. That's because you're just a poor individual. Uh, I'm doing out well too. I may have missed a lot of chats. So apologies. In the process of rebooting paint, rebottling paints, good paint. Crappy flip flops says me. Yeah. You think after decades of users complaining they fix that says Muse. The thing is with the work with the Games Workshop paints. I don't know why they don't change them, but it's I guess because they dry out fast and people have to buy more. Also, a lot of their paints are quite thick and probably not suited to bot to drop a bottles anyway. If you think about it logically, some of their paints are quite thick and stodgy. And um it might just be that for a lot of them, you can't get them out of the stopper out of the dropper bottle a lot of viejo paints are really thick as well and they're a pain in the bum well most of them are but some of them are but maybe it's just more a case of there's too many that are too thick i don't know they must have a good reason for not changing the bottle design because i mean let's be honest a dropper bottle like you get with viejo and uh and ammo by meg from a financial point of view those bottles are probably a lot cheaper than the uh the flip top pots we have right now so they're not skimp it's not like they're skimping Probably cost more. Uh, Lord Barkley the third is in because Dad says Malud. Muse says I haven't played in years. I just love the kits. 
Mayhem says that Dad's too quiet because he's chasing that fish. Yeah, scaly models, uh, we all call him Dad. Uh, he's got a fish that's a psycho in his tank and it hassles all the other fish. I've missed some. Uh, up to David says something. I started with Games Workshop back in 1991, used their paints for about 15 years, moved to Coat d'Arm, then Vallejo. Best thing I ever did. Coat d'Arms were good for Old Hammer, though. Coat d'Arm was the company that used to make the original Warhammer paints back in the day. It's the same company. I think this is, I've got this right. Same company based in Manchester, I think, or in the northwest somewhere. Uh, and then GW then got the manufacturer switched to China. There's a company in China that makes them. It was going to be, if you're wondering why you've got Viejo Game Color, uh, the reason that Viejo Game Color exists is that when, when GW were looking at a new paint manufacturer, uh, Viejo was one of the companies they approached, they were looking at, and the, the Game Color range started off as Viejo making some paints or Games Workshop, like the new paints that they were going to be, which is why you get similar colors to the modern range because they were i don't know whether they were like demos or they made a small selection of paints to see how they worked out but for whatever reason it probably cost you you went to manufacturing china for the uh for the current paints but i have to tell you i mean i love viejo paints a lot but i i in my personal opinion it's only my personal opinion gw paints are the best for brush painting absolutely by far but that's just my opinion i've used many and i just love them i love them uh Uh, Matt Harris says, go, go forget GW, go straight for the Viejo game color range. They are great, great paints. I actually prefer GW though. I don't, I think, I do like the Viejo game color, but I, I find the GW ones a bit more opaque in some cases. I think it's just personal preference, to be honest. But now, you know, they were originally going to be uh, made by Viejo until they went somewhere else. Let's get these bits cleaned up. La 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 la. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I wonder if they stay with the current pots, it would be too much to retool for new dropper bottles. Probably not. Because think about it. Uh, if they were going to re... Because the paints aren't manufactured in... in not in them anyway. They're made in China. Uh, and... I would suspect if they, if, they, if they did dropper bottles, they would just use the same dropper bottles you can buy in bulk that every other manufacturer uses. Like Viejo and Ammo and everybody else. They're just like third-party bottles that these companies buy in millions to use. Nobody makes their own bottles. You can buy those dropper bottles. I think the GW ones are custom for them. But in all reality, they probably find it a lot massively cheaper. Because right now you've got these little stubby bottles with a hinge and a lid and everything else. It'd be much better if they just bought a billion standard-issue dropper bottles like everybody else has save them a lot of money because the company that's making the paints for them probably already has like probably already makes paints for other people and probably already uses those bottles elsewhere so there must be a valid reason they do it and not drop a bottles that isn't money because i think it would be cheaper to use drop a bottle because they're smaller and cost less to produce it's literally a bottle and a top and a lid you've not got a bottle and a hinge and a because that hinge will be a two-part molded piece you've got to make it in a two-part mold so I don't know. It, it's, it's frustrating that they didn't put the air paints in dropper bottles. I mean, I mean, that's an air paint. Seriously? I've got to get my pipette out, pipette out now? Yeah. So it's frustrating they didn't do that. I don't, I don't know. I don't really don't know. I don't know what it is. There's a reason, but I can't think what it would be. Because I think it would be cheaper to use dropper bottles for them. And you know G-dubs. Whatever's cheapest. Well, just in my personal opinion, I prefer GW paints. The game colour. But game colour are very, very... I've got... I mean, I've got an enormous collection of Viejo paints. Don't get me wrong. And I'll mix and match them. I'll use both. But I don't know why. I just like Viejo paint. Uh, the GW paints more. I think it's just a personal preference there. I think it's partly what you're used to what you like oops i think it depends on your painting style as well i don't tend to do a lot of glazing or thin kind of painting techniques so maybe that's maybe that figures into it right this thing is a pain now it's a little tiny pistony thing that nobody's ever gonna see 
And yet here I am, dutifully scraping away the glue bead. Glue bead! Get rid of that little bit there. Again, you've got a ribbed surface here, and you can't get anything in there to sand it, so get your scribing tool and just scribe it away. And then when you paint that, of course, you'll get a wash in there or a shade, and that will hide the little any little ridge that is left, a little bit of seam or glue bead in there will be hidden away. Again, nobody's ever going to see this bit anyway. It's underneath. Underneath the dangly bits who are matron. Ah, we're up to you will be your best then viejo than army painter says rage model i've never tried the army painter ones i hear they're very thin and, and transparent though i'd like gw paints and dropper bottles absolutely uh assuming you can buy 15 mil dropper bottles for pennies i don't think it would cost them much no because they'd buy like you'd buy them in bulk you can go on to you know you can go on to various trade suppliers now and buy like a thousand dropper bottles It'll cost you a few quid it's not expensive uh, and when you're buying them as a company in bulk, they'll be buying millions of them. It will be a lot cheaper because they're 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 drop their bottles are custom made. Don't forget, if they went to drop the bottles. They could just buy them in bulk and get massive discounts and just do it cheap and charge us exactly the same for them. No doubt, yeah, of course. But I think I think there must be a practical consideration. I think it's more just a case that some of their paints are just far too thick, and it may be like. Not like, like, look at Viejo paint, some of their, like, Viejo colour range. They are so thick that you have a right hard struggle getting anything out of the dropper bottle. But most of them are okay. I think with GW, it's more a practical consideration of, I think, a lot of their paints are far too thick to be tolerable through a dropper bottle. Perhaps. I don't know. That's my, that's anything I can think logically. That they've tried it and thought, you know what, it's such a pain in the bum trying to get the paint out of the bottle. We'll just keep sticking with what we've got because you know they their paints are designed ultimately for brushing. They do favour brushing rather than airbrushing. So I don't know. I don't know. In the same way that I mean, if you think about it, they're not the only offenders in this in this thing. Because think about it. Hamia paints, Hamia acrylics. They're absolutely useless at brush painting. They're not suited at all for brush painting. They're actually designed for airbrush work. And yet they come in these big glass pots with big wide open lids. And the only way to get them in your airbrush is to use a, a decanter with a spatula, uh, with a pipette, or run them down the side of a stick or something. So Tamiya do exactly the same, but their paints are designed for airbrush. I need a small, I need a small fine sanding thing. Hang on. I need half a sanding stick. No, I had one. Oh well. Let's make an Eric the Harper B. Eric the Harper B. Uh, we need to cut off. I'm gonna show you a little handy thing here. There we go. These are UMP sticks, by the way. If you need to know what they are. Unfortunately, you get stickiness on that end, but not a problem. Yeah, so Tamir are just the same. It's still not going to fit, is it? No, never mind. Tamiya are exactly the same with their brushes being designed for airbrush, air paints. I do wish that they hadn't called them acrylics because I, my entire childhood was spent trying to brush paint them and failing miserably most of the time. Live and learn. We live and learn. I would say personally, GW are my favourite paints or Citadel, closely followed by Vallejo. Um, I haven't experienced a lot of other paint brands purely because I've got so many paints. I don't need to buy more paints. So I haven't had occasion to buy more paints from other brands at this time. I've got a small collection of the Ammo by Mig ones. I didn't get on with them so much. They're all right. They're nice for airbrushing if you do it right. Uh, I've not really tried brush painting them, so I can't speak to that. I think they're okay. But I prefer I prefer GW Viejo. 
look at chat again in a moment what time are we on 10 to 20 to 5 Gone fast i've not done much waffle huh? mm -mm 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 -mm. but i have to be honest and say since i started doing warhammer stuff my airbrush has seen less and less use since i've learned thanks to you know realizing that it was tamiya paints that made me think i couldn't paint since i've learned that i can actually brush paint to, to a certain degree i've really enjoyed discovering it because it's i've spent you know 30 years not brush painting let's be honest here and then all of a sudden along comes citadel paints and then viejo paints and i'm like wait i can brush paint this is a whole new model a method of model painting that I've never experienced because it's always been airbrush and stuff before. I'm like, wait, now I can enjoy this. I can actually brush paint and it's it's fun. <gasps> so I'm, I'm maxing out my brush painting experience because I've got a whole child list I've got to catch up on. So I'm loving the fact now. It's a bit like it's a bit like thinking that you can't ride a bicycle until you realize that your bicycle's actually got square wheels and when you put normal round wheels on it suddenly you're like wait i can ride a bicycle it's i'm not a complete flunky when it comes to bike riding cool now i'm gonna ride my bike everywhere you queen song it's a bit like that oh i couldn't brush paint turns out <laughs> what do you know i can i just didn't have the right paints and tools Doodle 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 doodle. Where's my scribey tool? So going back to about painting figures from Edward's comment earlier on. I think, and I say this in my, you know, who am I video on my channel. I think anyone, anyone can do what I do. Because what I do is just like beginner level stuff. To get you going and what i do is find the quick lazy way of doing it that looks just as good like i said in many videos i think anyone can do what i do it's just a case of knowing what tools and equipment to use how that's it Like, Ian, if nobody's ever explained wet palette to you, you won't know what one is. But if you if you have a wet palette explained to you, and you make one or buy one, and you start to use it, you'll suddenly find your brush painting level goes up. Your brush painting ability. Why? Because now your paints aren't drying out in two minutes, and you're painting with properly hydrated paints, and it makes all the difference. And it's simple things like that. If somebody didn't explain about wet palettes to me, I wouldn't even know what a wet palette was. So it's not about having skill. I don't think any of this is about skill. When it comes to any kind of art, not any kind of art, but something like this, painting a model. I don't think skill is really a factor in painting a model. I think imagination is the key. I think a little bit of technical knowledge as how to do it. And then it's imagination after that. Knowing how to paint something is not super, super complicated because there's not a lot of principles you need to learn. It's a bit like driving a car. You need to learn how to drive a car. You've got to learn a few things. But once you drive the car, like before I learned to drive a car, I tried to think about how you change gears and how you know when to change gear and what. And my brain was broken trying to get my head around. How do I know when to change from first to second? The moment I got in a car and just did it, I'm like, oh, now it makes sense. Okay, I can do that. There you go. It's one of those things. It's like if you can, you can tie your shoelaces, but good luck trying to explain how to tie shoelaces. So the technical how to physically paint something is a little bit of the process. 99% of painting, well, I say 10% is, is knowledge, technical knowledge. And the rest of it is imagination. Once you know how to do things with paint, then you have to sort of get the imagination to start doing things with paint. Right, which way are these legs going now? 
Uh, that one goes that way. This one goes this way. And they go into a great big hole. There you go. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe. It can go like that. I'm going to get the base out. Base. Where did you go? Unfortunately, with the Knigget, the standard Imperial Knigget, there's not a lot of posing options, really, without cutting things up and hacking them around. And You've not really got a lot of options going on. Because you've got a hexagonal hole and a hexagonal peg. You could do that. You could do that. I could have it kicking out. Giving somebody a right kick in the gentleman parts. Or not. But yeah, I... When it comes to when it comes to learning, I I happily confident that anyone can do what I do because there's not a lot of technical stuff to let you can have it kicking like kicking the ball. Not really got a lot of options, not really, because the foot is like that. You see, it looks they did it like that. It looks derpy. It's dumb. I think we'll stick with the assigned pose. I think. So. Yeah, anyway, so getting back to it, yes, there's, there's not a lot of technical stuff to learn. How to paint is not the complicated bit. It's then a making how to paint. How to paint something interesting. You know, how can I explain? It's hard to explain this really in a way that's not. Well, at all. Um. It's trying to figure out a way to explain it. it it's not it's not like it's not like airbrushing in a little way. It's, it's not it's not like you, you're not going to learn it. And it's not like the easiest. I'll say that whole sentence again. That was complete train wreck. It's not like it's the easiest thing in the world. I'm not teaching you how to you know swallow food here or something. But. Um, that's not the hard bit. Because all you're learning is how to control a fluid, really. Once you've learned how to, you know, how to use a wet palette, what a wet palette does, how to thin paints, what difference that makes, why you'd want to do that. Once you learn how to control the paint that's on the brush, once you learn how different paints do different things, how to do a wash, how to do a glaze, once you learn those basics, That's your learning done. Yes, you can then get into advanced stuff like glazing and blending and wet blending. That's kind of top level stuff. But to just getting started. I got that the right around. Yeah. That's the butt area. That's yeah, there we go. So there we that's that one. Now, if you remember, I've not put the armor on the legs yet because that's going to be painted separately. That would be a crazy thing to do, would be to put the armor on. Uh, where are up to? Oh, ho, ho, he, 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 Eric the Harper B says model making. Yep, it says a mayhem model works. Uh. Lee Stevenson says, my work works in marketing, so I have to have a conversation like this often. It drives him mad when I look at things like an engineer. <laughs> yes. Uh, when I used to use Tamiya paints, my nose would start running, but now with Viejo, no problems at all, says Apple. Yeah, they're lacquers, basically. Mm -mm. Lacquer paint was a game changer for me, but brush painting is challenging as a new paint will reactivate the previous layer. Yeah, they are pretty strong. Uh, they are suited for airbrushing, but you can brush with them. Um, but you've got to kind of think about it carefully. Retro Rabbit says, my brain is an FIFO. One time I tried to learn Japanese and forgot how to drive. Mayhem says, how the hell did you manage that? He says, the new info pushed the old info out. <laughs> You could always have him flailing his legs like Ed 209 says, ma'am, you could do that. Uh, Blood Bowl with nothing but squigs. Colin Hill, you're more than a saw to get a half decent pose. Oh, because Festa says, get the saw out, you know you want to. Yeah, the problem with that is you have to cut that bit there to make this joint. You have to cut here. 
there are people that do it and I just don't have those kind of skills because I'm a chud when it comes to hacking things around like Colin Vesta 6 7's workshop he loves his cutting things around he's currently cutting big chunks out of a bane blade as we speak which uh, don't forget of course myself and Colin will be on tonight I think we're on tonight aren't we Colin? Midnight tonight on Festa 67's workshop channel is me and Colin shooting the breeze and building some warhammers. In with his great big bane blade, and I'll be building some more space walls. That's that bit done. I need to glue his dangly underparts, if you pardon the expression. Now, last time I did this, it was a pain in the bum because they didn't seem to fit very well anywhere. So that goes, I think, like. No, I could never figure out the last time I did one of these. Uh, that bit goes in there like that, you see, like that, and that goes in there like that. Oh, mm -hmm. Why, so that goes in there. Ah, there we go. That bit I remember now. I remember now. It's kind of loosely. There's like little pistony bits that go in the middle. The first time you do this, you won't know where the hell to glue it, but basically it goes in that little, that little bit. With this little trench here that flat bit goes in there so let's get that glued in if we can i may be off camera for a moment while i try and get the glue into a place glue 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 gluing gluing all the things in place moving the base out of the way actually lined up properly there either which doesn't help there we go that's better Line it up nicely. There you go. Free for a pound. Free for a pound. It's kind of fiddly to get this thing into place, but once it's in, it's in. There she is. Little dangly bit. I do like the way they make this massive device that makes no sense whatsoever, but has some logical design ethic to it. It's kind of makes it sort of make sense a little bit loose but it will glue down eventually the other reason you don't need to worry about that little seam line in there which i forgot is that this bit does actually cover it up so. right there you see except this one's tricky because this one's at a funky angle and i may have just slightly screwed the pooch or maybe i didn't hang on let me drag that along there Okay, this one sits a bit further forward because the leg is further forward. There we go. Do we? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, snapping. Don't be snapping on me. That will be a bad thing. This one's a weirder fit because it's tilted forward slightly, so it's a bit more feisty. Get it glued in place. There probably was, there probably were Kyra. Probably had one the right way around and one the wrong way around, but they've gone in. That's all I care about. I've not done a lot of work today, but I've had an enjoying chat with you guys. Enjoyable chat, even. That's the other thing, Carl. If you're about to hack these legs, right, you have to rebuild these pistons to fit as well, which would be interesting. I like the way they're at different positions. It just kind of has a certain sensibility to it. That's the one. Right, that's that bit done. Uh, patch on the butt for reasons. Yes, it's a special. It's where you stow all the hamper fit, all the jam and sandwiches and beer and stuff. Butt hatch. Uh, I'm saying hi to everybody. I recently picked up a high voltage DC transformer going to either make a static grass applicator or a stun gun. Likely both. Zap, says Retro. What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I need to put this on a flat surface to make sure it's all level. Let me get out the glass plate of flatness, which it isn't that flat, I've, I've recently realised. But it's the flattest thing I've got. Yeah, close enough. It's going to get glued down anyway, and we're going to it'll have a bit of a texture base on it, so... It never sits perfectly flush right out of the box. That's what the glue's for. There we go. Put that bit down there. Yeah. So there you go. That's that bit done. Uh, what's next? Next is we've got some tubes. Tubes and pipes. 
Every machine is a stun gun if you operate it wrong enough. Absolutely. It's like me, everything's a knife to me. Because I could I could cut myself on a piece of string. Right, I've got some tubes. 79 and 80. Which I can see right here. Tubular, look at the tubularity. Tubulations. Tubular, dude. 79 and 80. I'm not really with it, Sam. It's a bit of a rubbish stream today. I do apologise. Bit waffly, bit nonsensical. I think I'm just tired today. Uh, okay, a little bit of a nubulation there. We need to sand away that. It's like worms, like a ridged texture. Which I used to hate until I got, until I came up with my cunning way to sort out mold lines on ridged textures. Yeah, don't look at these sanding sponges, they're not actually legal, they don't exist. I just have no choice but to use them because I've run out of sanding sponges that are the right roughness. Don't look at that, it's not, it's not real. You didn't see it. Shh. They're not sold by your models. They're not sold in the UK, to be perfectly honest. They were a gift from someone from abroad. You know, that bit on the map that's not in the UK. Abroad. Right, so. These little tubes. The mould line. On this bit that's solid, we can just scrape it away. Scrape it away, scrape it away, scrape it away now. Tubes. Tubes. Here's a question for you guys, and I've told you that I did I was useless at brush painting for 30 years till I figured out how to use decent paints. Uh, assuming that you've had you know you've been in the hobby for a little while, but it might be something that you're reasonably new at. What thing did you learn? Let's do it one or two ways. If you if you've been doing this for a while, if you've been painting models and building models for a while, what method or technique did you recently learn that you that you didn't know about for all the years before? Or if you're new to the hobby, what's what technique have you recently learned? Because there's all, all of us, even as old dogs that've been doing this for years, we're all learning new things. Even in the last few years, I've learned about you know, using, using enamels and oils for weathering. So uh, now I will show you it too. Yeah, what have you learned recently? If you're new to the hobby, or if you're an old lag like me, what new thing have you learned? On top of all the stuff you do in the past, right? Tube. It's ribbed for my pleasure, and it's got like a rib texture. It's like a it's like a hose type thing. It's got rib texture to it. I have to get rid of the seam line. The seam line goes over the tops of the ribs, but it also goes in between the ribs. So first of all, it makes a brilliant noise, but it also gets rid of the mold line. Take your scraping tool, this or otherwise. I don't recommend using a knife because a knife will scratch up the plastic. Use something with a solid, unflexible blade like a mold line removal tool from games workshop perfect that's that gently sand it don't go aggressively you just get rid of the mess you've made with the tool which is much because you've not used a knife blade i'm just getting rid of any fluff and fuzz now the tricky bit now the, the what's not tricky and this is something i only learned like you know a year or two ago and I didn't learn this, I just kind of figured this out and was like, wait a minute, because I'm lazy and I try to find easy ways to do things, I thought, why don't I just use my scribing tool and run it where the mold line is? We've got rid of the mold line on the tops of the ribs. What we need to do now is get rid of it between the little ribs. Tedious and it's a slow process. It doesn't take that long, and it does mean that when you get this painted up, you won't have a mold line going down the middle. And also, because you've given it a very, very light sanding, you may also restore if you've softened any of the edges of the, the ribbed bits, it might just restore the depth of the recess and make it look nice and clean and ribbed again. 
or anything like this, like the sort of ribbed. This is like the kind of tubing you have coming off the back of your spray booth. It's kind of like that washing machine vent hose. Anything like that, or uh, you know, say the cowling around a gear stick, or you've got perhaps plasma coils on plasma weapons, anything like that. This kind of rib texture. A bit quick going over with your scribing tool. And it just helps hide that. Now, when I paint this, of course, I'm going to paint this probably in black or in very dark greys to make it like some kind of rubber hosing, like a gasket around some cabling and piping. The other way you can paint this stuff is to do it in metallic shades. Like it's almost like it's, you know, like you've got the metal sheathing around your shower head cable you know the, the cable that feeds the water up to your shower head you've got that metal sort of snaking around it you could do it as that if you're doing it as metallic drop something what was that there you go if you're doing it as metallic you really want to make sure you get rid of every last vestige of the mold line in the gaps if you're doing it as black or dark color you don't need to be so careful because when I paint this, what I'm going to do is I'll paint it using shades to get a kind of rubber look. It'll be painted with null oil over a very light grey coat, or maybe even white perhaps. And that will give it a wonderful rubbery look rather than just painting it black. So there you go. So that's looking nice. I've got a little scrabbly bit here and there. If you get a little scrapey bit where you've gone off on the side a little bit, it's off some your extra thin. Most of it off. Then just run it down the recess. It just tidies up any little rough scrapes or scratches. But if you've used like the mold line removal tool or something with a solid inflexible blade, it should be nice and smooth anyway. There's almost no glue on the brush there at all, and it just gets rid of that ridge. It's all the way down the middle. So when I cover that in null oil now, a couple of couple of three coats of null oil, you won't see any of that. Because the null oil in the recess will hide it. Uh, glazing. Oh, they asked you about what you found out about new. So let's have a look and see. Uh, Archie's in. Welcome, Archie. Uh, Common Road Junction. Airbrushing is new for me, says Muse. Yep. Welcome. Uh, I recently got better at blending colours, I think, reference to Orc Walk Boss. Yeah, I've still not got the hang of wet blending yet. I've not done a lot of it. Uh, for me, I would have to say chipping and pastels, learning how they work as Panzer. And this is the thing I always say, no matter how long you've been doing like this hobby or anything, really, I've been doing this for 40 odd years and I'm still learning stuff. The stuff I learned like last year, the year before. So never think that you know everything. Uh, Paul Dittomasa was in. Hey, Paul, welcome, my friend. Best lesson. High quality sable hair brushes are great, but one, don't overload them with paint. Two, don't use them for anything but wet painting. Three, take care of them and clean them properly. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Retro says one, collect underpants, two, three, profit. Or you could say one, trousers first, then shoes. Those are brush rule basics. Always keep the cheaper brushes on hand. I even keep separate brushes for metallics. Don't want anything sparkly, says Muse. Uh, yes, uh, I, what I tend to do is I've got my very expensive brushes from a brand and a other brand and some Windsor and Newton Series 7 that e-models do sell. <laughs> Um, and the brushes I've got are the expensive ones that are all sable hair and stuff. And some of them are synthetic, but they're very nice and expensive, like the wooden ones I showed you earlier. Um, they get used for color painting. If I'm taking paint on the wet palette and it's a normal like red or blue or green or whatever, and I'm just painting something in or I'm painting details or a figure or whatever, they get used for that. When I'm doing metallics, I use not those brushes. I've got some good brushes, but I tend to use other brushes that I don't care about so much, the less expensive ones, because the metallic flake can really get into the ferrule and knack your brushes up. And it can also wear the bristles down as well. Uh, and then for anything else that's even more hardcore, I have old, I've got a whole big pot full of crappy old brushes, old ones that have got worn out and I don't really care. Like I've got a whole, I've got a whole mass of 
Citadel base brushes that are a bit old and crunkly like that because these are perfect for dry brushing small areas or stippling. These are great for base brushes are great for dry brushing when they're no longer really useful as a base brush because they've lost their shape. They're great for dry brushing. Uh, and also, although I keep forgetting to do it, I should really use a different brush for shades. If you've got expensive, expensive brushes that are your Sunday best, don't use them for metallics. Don't use them for shades. Uh, because metallics, the, the flake can damage the brush hairs and wear them down. Also, it collects in the ferrule. And it helps push the bristles apart. But also shades and thick washes like that, they're designed to have different surface tension properties, which means they are designed to kind of collect in recesses, which is not what you want when they're collecting between the bristles of your brush in the ferrule. But they can be quite hard wearing as well. So. I mean, hard on the brushes. So you're doing shades again, try and use an old brush. You don't need a nice, expensive, pointy brush for shades. You can use an old, if you've got an old layer brush, sit in a layer brush, an old brush that's got a bit of a point on it. You're fine. Just don't use your nice, expensive brushes for shades because they do wear your brushes out faster. All right, let's do the same on this one. We'll just get rid of this little seam line. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's interesting to see what you guys are learning. We, you're always going to be learning. There'll be new techniques that come out that you'll have to learn. There'll be things that have been around for a long time, but you've never had to do before. You know, when I realized when I thought I couldn't do brush painting all those years ago, I just stopped. I just started doing airbrush stuff. And where I had to brush paint, I didn't get really any far. Like if I had a figure with a vehicle. Tummy a kit or something. I wouldn't really get much further than a base coat and then a wash, a thinned paint wash. And that was about it, really. A bit of chipping, perhaps, but it was a lot of airbrush work. And I didn't, I didn't actually then feel compelled to. I was, I thought, well, I can do what I can do, and that's what I'll do. It was only when I came across other techniques and brush painting that I realised I can brush paint, and then I started learning new stuff. But I was already, I was in my comfort zone. I, I knew what I knew and I was happy doing what I was doing until I knew what I was missing. But the same does work in reverse, you know, like I'm saying it was Games Workshop that the GW stuff and Warhammer stuff that taught me how to brush paint open my eyes to brush painting with proper paint. But then the reverse does apply as well. Because if you, if your first experience of model making was say Warhammer or miniature painting, well, let's specifically say Warhammer. If you, if you grew up painting Warhammer uh, and watching say the Duncan videos and how to paint and you painted the Warhammer way, Warhammer TV way, then you'll have some good looking models, but you may never have learned about things like using pastels and pigments and advanced weathering techniques and all the techniques that say armor builders and, and, and other branches of modelers use and other weathering techniques and things like that and airbrushing. So the, the reverse will be the same. There'll be people who've just been brought up painting the Warhammer way, the Games Workshop way, haven't learned all those advanced techniques and they might have been happily doing it for years. And then they have a look at some photographs on Forge World and they're like, wait, how do they get all that dusty effect on that tank? Pastels, powders. Of course, GW never tell you that. Right, so something I've learned, which I wish I'd tried still paints long ago, so Steve Ford. We're doing okay, Fox, trying to figure out what to do for lunch, says Paul. Uh, um, uh, noodles. If, if in doubt, noodles. Mm -hmm. What kind of psychopath goes sock shoe, sock shoe? There'll be one. There'll be one that does that. Uh, Retro says, I used to be a welder and my old boss always used to touch things while talking to me. He burnt his finger so many times. So dumb. I have a cup of good brushes and a cup of used to death brushes. Yeah, never throw brushes away unless they are. And even when a brush gets to the point that it's no use for anything, keep it. Because that's what you use to apply texture paints, like your Agrell and Badlands or your 
or you whatever if you're putting pva on a diorama or you've got like mud effect paint when i'm doing a ghrelin earth and a ghrelin badlands for me texture cackle paint i get the oldest deadest brush i can find just slap it on and then i throw the brush away if i can't clean it i never throw brushes away only when it's got like one bristle left and even that's got a 90 degree bend in then you can try although you could use that bristle for an antenna Uh, there's a common thread that a couple of years back that says sharpie pens were the thing and now some something new has taken over so what do i do with 20 sharpie pens yeah um i yeah sharpie pens i don't use i do use them but not for modeling really um but i did the same when it when we're doing gumpler and stuff it was like sharpie pens you can use them for like marking things out and it's like okay you can make little highlight colors and stuff and i've got some metallic sharpies and they're actually not too bad um but then I discovered the Uniposca paint pens, which are actual acrylic paint, and they are vastly superior to Sharpies. Pens are great for like painting a ridge, to, like a ridge detail that you can't quite get with the brush if you're not quite up to paint it with the brush. Problem with Sharpies is this ink will bleed through anything. If you draw, if I, if I, if I wrote something on here now that, if I'd scribbled on there with a Sharpie pen and then put primer over it and paint, after a while it would kick through the paint. You'd see it. It would bleed through. It's a pain. It's a real pain. Um. But also, they they under UV light they fade and they go blue and green and they go all horrible colours and they just yeah they're not they're not designed for that they're not ink so they'll go really weird so but you know if you've got a model on the shelf after about two years they'll be green where it was black so I I got rid of them and I used a Uniposca paint pens instead which are, which are actually acrylic paint and really opaque and they're really good use them for the same thing to like pick out edges and stuff. But they are really good. I've painted an entire model in uh, Uniposca paint pens. Uniposca paint pens are like that. But it's actually acrylic paint, not ink. So when you paint this on, it's like any other paint. They're really opaque. I've got loads and loads of colours. I did the uh, Metal Gear Solid Bear Guy kit. And it was metal. It was like uh, uh, Old Snake. Or was it? the metal gear solid five so it was whatever he is thingy snake i don't know what snake i've a long time since i played it old uh, broken snake or vengeful snake or everywhere i don't know it's him and the little the little tiny little uh, petite guy on his backpack was painted like um hideo kojima <laughs> so a lot of the painting on that was done with those pens for like the grays and stuff to give it a cartoony look that was fun so yeah but then what do you do with all the sharpies man now we have to put these cables on the cables go from a place to another place. Cable needs to go from where? From here, see, there's lovely. From here, to here. There we go. Nice and easy, not particularly complicated. I'll move this out of the way. Just slots into that little hole there. This is not a problem. Touch of glue, touch of the glue. Can go there. Can go there. And we are in. On this one, you have like a little peg that goes in the hole. On that end, it's more like a ball and socket joint because you've got to, you've got to sort of wiggle it around a little bit. So that end is not such a good fit, but it looks fine. Somebody in chat mentioned pizza and now I've got a dilemma because Mama Fox wants like peck and chips for dinner. Peck is like, it's a tin of like, it's a bit like spam, but nice. I'm thinking spam's nice. See, she really wants peck and chips, but I find it bland. And, but, but now I really want a pizza. This is the problem, like with doing live streams with you guys in chat, you know, you're about, because I'm supposed to be on a low fat diet okay and you know low salt and low fat diet and all various th but it's impossible for me because with the best intentions in the world i think to myself see that's got a ball there and a little peg there I think to myself right low fat diet i can have a treat maybe once a week on a on a monday when it's the monday model show we might have a takeout just for sake of speed because we've got to get ready for the show and we'll treat ourselves to a takeout 
I'll be like, okay, we'll have a Chinese or a KFC. We'll do it once on a Monday and that's it. That's my one treat for the week and I'll probably regret that. But then, like, a few days later, I'll do a stream on a Friday and somebody will mention Chinese or curry or... And it's like, oh, and then I'll, I'll have to have a take. And then by the time we've... Because I stream on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. And then Monday show. By the time by the time I got to the end of the weekend, I've just I've just eaten all the bad things I'm not supposed to eat. And it's just you guys are a bad influence. You really are the worst. You are the worst. Right, so tubes. Tubes are in place. He's a bit dangly down there. A bit, you think they could make that fit a bit better, wouldn't you? Really? He's like, oh. Then again, they've got to allow for the leg wigglage. Dangly bits, dangly bits, dangly bits, dangly bits. But that doesn't get picked up for copyright. And it's not my channel. <laughs> right, so you've got some dangly tubes. Uh, there's something with my name on it. It's something I've learned. Oh, I've done that one already. Brush handle can also end up in a diorama, says may you use. Oh, yeah. I've got paint pens in some place. Need to see what brand they are. Maybe use them. Underdog says, why have I only discovered this channel? <laughs> yeah, you need to know all the things. Clearly, you've, you've never purchased from, from emodels.co.uk, your one-stop shop. For all your model making needs. Emodels.co.uk. Buy all the things. Right, so that's how far we've got so far. It really is a bit of a gormless post. Uh, I think they did um, they did a chaos night, didn't they? They did the desecrate, the night desecrator, which is the chaos um, tainted night. And that had this brilliant dog leg design, this got digitigrade dog leg design. It's like, why can't we have that on? Oh, I really wish to upgrade these legs to something more. Like the armager's got this nice sort of digitigrade dog leg. I don't know. Right, so that's there. What's next? Well, next is armor pieces, but we're not doing armor pieces just yet. I'm, like I said, I'm not, I'm not cut two off the sprue, but to save me having lots of bit of armor lying around, I'll put them in there. Um, to save me having lots of bits of armour lying around loose, I'm not going to cut any armour off the sprues because they'll be kept separate and applied at the very end. Most of them anyway, at the very end, um, because they'll be painted separately from the inner frame. So I'm not going to cut those off, so we'll move on a little step. I'll mark off what I've done. I've done that. I've done that. These widgy bits. These dangly bits. I get annoyed with them hanging around my backside all the time. Underdog says painting subbed. I mean, Underdog Painting says subbed. Thanks, Underdog. This isn't my channel, though. This is the eModels channel. Monday night, 9 p.m., eModels.co.uk. This YouTube channel, me, Ted, Colin, and Chris do a live stream every Monday, 9 p.m. Be there or just be somewhere else. Uh, now, we also have the dangly bit, the dangly widge bit that goes down here. The banner. As you can see her. This little dangly... Banner th I'm not going to cut that off the sprue either because again you don't glue that on now ideally what you do is glue that on later it just glues in down there because it's got a banner that I need to paint and it's going to be easier for me to paint a banner flat like this and then glue it on than it is to glue it on there and help and be having to try and paint a banner yeah we'll just we'll glue it on at the end so that's that bit. Can't cut that armor off. Can't do that bit. Can't do that bit. I could glue on the piece of armor that covers up here, but again, it just covers up other bits of the paint. So I'll do that. We'll put the legs to one side. I should put the base away again. Because now, now, we need to start on the torso. On the main body bit now. Let's get these bits out. Do -do 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 -do. Put the armor shielding on last. You can always paint them on the sprue. Oh, no, I never paint on the sprue. Where are we? I'd rather put things on sticks. I can't be bothered painting on the sprue and then cutting them off and then having to repaint the bits because I've had to sand away. All right, so I, I would just paint them. I mount the things on sticks. Basically, when you do an Imperial Knight, you end up with the entire inner frame, uh, two pauldrons, the leg armor, the chest armor although if, yeah you leave the chest armor off you end up with like five or six bits of armor separate on sticks and have you and what have you uh, and that and the inner frame and the arms i keep the arms separate right so let us do what do we need we need the 
snippers of cutting. 106, 107, 109, and 108. It's almost like they were in the right order. You all will be on the same sprue, though. You watch. Uh, not on the side. Who numbers them on the back? I don't know. Right, so 106. <laughs> Look at this, right? You've got this piece here. I don't know if you'll see this. You've got this piece here. And on the sprue, it's got 116, 103, 91, 126, 106. Which one is this? It's that one there. But it's like you could. Which number relates to this piece? Come on, GW. The way they do their sprues sometimes is exasperating. But we still love them anyway. Do, 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 do. I won't get much far, very far into this because it'll be a lot of clean up and bits and bobs. We'll see if we can get a few bits glued together. One oh six, one oh seven, which is the ringy piece. I'll say that again. It's the ringy piece. Separate word. Happily friendly. They don't don't go blue. Not in chat. Okay. 106, 107, uh, 109, and 108. 109, one, now you have to kind of look for the part of what it looks like. You can't really look for the part, there they are, as a numbered piece because they don't actually follow any logic. These parts the same. I'm going to leave these on the sprue. Because they're 108 and 109. I don't want to get the wrong one, so I'll take 108 off, but I'll leave 109 on there. And I'll do that in a minute. I'll do that one in a moment. Ooh. My cushion's escaping. Hang on. Yeah, so, let's get these bits cleaned up. Uh, I think what I might do is not use that black pad, because it's. I think it's affecting my colour balance a little bit. Let's just carry on like this. So, let's get these bits nipped off. Uh... Right. Although it is handy that all this stuff goes on there and doesn't go into a pile. Just we'll just use that. There we go. So we're going to start building the torso. This is basically side walls and bits and bobs. And again, it's not particularly complicated. The weird thing is, and it's, you, I can tell it's not complicated because I've only ever built one Imperial Knight before now, and I can remember enough of it. I kind of know what's going on. I'm not having to rely on the instructions too much. And it just goes to show that the build is not. I think. Uh, go through that one. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, yes, yeah, so if you didn't answer the question earlier on, or if I missed your comment, what, what have you recently learned? What modelling tip or technique have you recently learned? Whether you're old or new at the hobby, what's the latest thing you've realised or discovered for this hobby? Be a technique or a method? I'm a recent convert to wet palettes, like the last couple of years. Again, thanks to G-dubs. Well, not thanks to them. They don't they don't talk about wet palettes, but thanks to you know people that make these kits. I hadn't even heard of a wet palette. But then again, I wasn't familiar, you see, with, with the water-based acrylics. <laughs> Just lightly carve these away. Now this is in a frame. If you remember, I'm not going to be painting this to look like the box art. Well, it will look like the box art. It's got I've, I've got to paint the right colours because I'm painting it as Canis Rex. So I can't just sort of randomise the colour scheme. But the box art shows it as nice and clean and a little bit of weathering and chipping here and there, but nice and clean. And in fact, the weird thing with the box art is it shows. I think you'll see on here. The weird thing with the bot with the box art. Which makes no visual sense at all is they show on the left grieve here if that's a grieve the imperial there's a half an imperial eagle 
Now on that greave, it's all scratched and scraped and worn away, and it's got like it's all pockmarked. The decal itself is solid black. So it's all pockmarked and scratched and scraped. But that doesn't appear anywhere else because of course it's bare metal and gold, which wouldn't get pockmarked and scratched and scraped. The flag's perfectly clean. Everything else is a little bit worn. So it, it's like a, there's no dirt on it. So this particular area here, the, the markings got scratched and scraped, but none of these have. And the white paint here hasn't chipped off. So it's like, it's kind of a clean and consistent look, which I don't, I don't really hold, hold much truck with. So we're not doing that. We'll do my usual, a bit more weathered and battered. Now, a lot of it is bare metal, so you can't really do a lot of weathering on bare metal. But we'll see what we can do. But, you know, there'll be no chipping on the bare metal parts. But there will be dirt and grime. Because Sir Hector, you know, he's, him and his, in his, in his uh, night suit, him and Canis Rex, they're flying around on the ship they found, doing, helping people out. But he's only got a small retinue of dudes to help him. He's not, he's not got all the people that were there before because he's the last of his house. And it's the last night suit from House Cerberus. He's limited in resources, you know. The the ship they're on may not have had the set I mean, kitted out to deal with Imperial Knights and have them all, you know. What I can't remember what it's called where the uh, the Imperial Knights are stored. It's got a specific name. So his his little retinue of dudes who I can't remember what they're called. They'll help him out and keep the keep the night room uh, maintained, but. They've got limited resources. Not like they've got access to, you know, a Mechanicus engine seer or anything like that to help them out. So they have to do what they can. So I expect Canis Rex, in my imagination, in my head canon, is taking some beatings. It, his entire purpose is to go and fight the good fight and remove anyone that threatens the Imperium, fight them with vengeance. Fury. There's going to be a share of scratches and scrapes. And maybe in my head cannon, they've been able to do some repairs, but you know, not a lot. At some point, perhaps, maybe he'll he'll happen across a, an Adeptus Mechanicus ship, or he'll go to a planet where there's a good uh, ad uh, mech presence. And they'll be able to help him repair properly and get the Canis Rex back up to speed, looking fantastic. But maybe not. Maybe it's a, he just ends up going to Colony World so far and he's not had a chance to do anything with the knight. So, yeah, in my head canon, it's going to be maintained, but not like properly maintained. We're not talking access to an STC to repair parts or anything like that. So we'll be doing some weathering. I want I want Canis Rex to tell a story. I want it to have been through the wars. And you can't find you can't find the scions of chaos and come out looking factory fresh. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. I'll just get rid of this mold line around the edge. So anyway, the point of saying that was I'm not being too careful with the inner frame parts. You can tell I make gumper when I say inner frame. It's some inner parts because these are just like metal parts anyway that have got some wear and tear. They're not going to be perfectly clean and maintained. It's the mechanical parts of the night suit. It's, you know, it's the inner bits. They're going to have some wear and tear on them. I can be a little less careful with these. Still being careful, of course. But I don't have to lose sleep over this bit being a little bit scritchy scratchy here and there. I did be do 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 do. I shall have a look at chat in a moment. I'll say that again with actual proper sentence. I shall have a look at the chat in a moment. You know, rather than just stringing half the words together, I'll string all the words together. Make an actual gosh darn sentence. 
Uh, how's the stream looking, guys? Is it still looking too dark and crappy, or is it looking remotely like 2021, or is it looking kind of 2007? Early days of YouTube, I don't, can't quite tell. There's all these lovely little details on the inner parts here that once it's all assembled, you won't see most of that. Pistons and cables and things. Oh my! make sure we have all these wires at the back that nobody's ever gonna see make sure we have spent some good time painting those a good time was had by all somebody pointed out the other day they said they said uh, why is it called canis rex that's like king dog and it's like yes yeah, it's, it's king of the dogs uh, and I can only assume, because it's never been explained in law, I can only assume because it's how Cerberan, and Cerberan being similar to Cerberus, and Cerberus being the legendary three-headed dog, one can only assume that of house Cerberan, Canis Rex was the lead knight of the Maniple, and therefore he is the big dog, the king dog, dog king of the dogs. All the other knights were perhaps called Canis this and Canis that. And it's major, can it's minor, maybe. Of course, this one was the big dog, king of the dogs. So he was Canis Rex. Maybe it was like the, the most important, the most honoured and venerated and uh, lead knight in the maniple. I like that word, maniple. Maniple. Okay, so that's that done. <laughs> Blow on that. Keep this bit up. Now we've got little rivets here. I hate these bits because you have to clean around them. Unless you do what I do. Can you do what I do? What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually shave them off. And you're thinking, what? Oh, why have you shaved off those rivets? Because I want to get rid of the mold line. But I can't be bothered going around the rivets. So what I'm going to do instead is take them off. Put them back on again. Yes. You're thinking, what? What, what, what? rivets my very dear friend kenneth in australia that sent me loads of rivets well i can use them for riveting purposes i really want pizza now clean that bit More tubes and pipes, wiring going on in there. Uh, how does this attach? This attaches. Uh, where does this attach? Oh, I see. Attaches. When does this attach? It goes in there like that. That goes like that. Just going to figure out in my head so I know how this goes on. There may be bits where I don't need to worry about mold lines because you can't actually see them. And it goes on like that. So it's maybe this one, isn't it? But it goes on there like that. You say like that. It... Yeah, so you can't actually see the mold line that's on the inside of the cable there. So don't worry about that. I cannot consider that as a problem I need to deal with. Excellent. Look at that. And uh, what I'll do is, I will now, that was piece number 108. Now I know where 108 needs to go, it needs to go there, that side. What I can do is, using cleverness, which I know for me is a, a, a tough challenge because I don't actually have a lot of cleverness. That goes there, so I'm going to put that there like that. I'll explain why I'm doing this because these may I think these parts are slightly ever slightly different to each other and therefore you can't just slap them in you have to make sure they line up with the other piece 8 and 9 108 109 line up with 107 and you have to make sure you get them the right way around so what I shall do is clean this one off Gentlemen, clean your bits. Off that. Because I need to get the rivets replaced on both. Now, 
Will we glue them on? Actually, it might be easier to glue them on first, I think. I'm going to carve those rivets away. <laughs> yes, I've got, I've got to be honest with you. When my, my, my mate Kenneth sent me those rivets, I'll show you in a minute. You've seen them before, but it, it just opened the world up to me. But like, you know, dealing with, you get a lot of rivets on Warhammer stuff and it can be a right pain sometimes to clean up mold lines where they go around the rivets because you've got to be all careful and work between the rivets and not sand them away. And it's like, oh, I don't do that now. I just, I just gouge them off with the blade and it came back on again. Life is so much better. Now, everything's sunshine. Life has meaning again. Yes, if you look at these, they have a slightly different, I think, slightly different. I don't know if it'll show on camera, but they have a slightly different profile. This one slants that way. This one slants that way. That's 108. This is 109. So what I need to do is 109 goes there like that. We'll see. 109, isn't it, at the back? Yes. I'm a bit unclear in the instructions sometimes. 108 goes there. One, I'm going to glue these on. Then we shall do the riveting. 108. I mean 109. Steady. Get it right. So put your glue on those tubes. Yeah. And on this one, which is 108. There. We need to have to work fast because I do need to have some wiggle room and wiggle them around a bit if they don't quite fit. I should have some play with them for a while. And then you get me rivets. A dee bitty boo, a dee bitty bitty bitty. Help me, Matt. Yep. I think those rivets would be a. 0.6 by 0.25. There we go. Perfect. All I shall do is. Take a rivet. Not roughly in the middle where I remember the middle was. And I may not get them in exactly the same place, but. As long as they match up. One. On the top, and then we can work on the middle bit. I nearly put my glue brush in my thing of rivets. Then, yeah, this one's not quite so flat, but that one's there. Not a lot of glue on that brush. And as long as the one, the other one is in the middle, it'll be roughly. There. Now, to be fair, these little details are inside the frame and under the arm, so nobody's ever going to see these anyway. But if it's next, if I've got an excuse to put rivets on things, I'm going to do it. Just roughly in the middle as best I can. Be good. The next one, it's easier to get the rivet on the. Well, you can't really see this, but get the rivet on your knife blade. Now, how to make rivets? Um, the easiest way to make rivets is to have a riveting tool. Now, the tool that my friend Kenneth used. Oh, I spilled my rivets. I'll pick them all up in a minute. Oh, uh, rivet spillage. All gone horribly wrong. Right. I've got rivets everywhere now. Oh, not quite know how I'm going to pick these up. Hang on. This may take a few moments. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Let's see if I can. Can I brush them? Can I brush them in? Let's. Uh... Oh, only I could spill rivets. And then somehow I have to figure out how to get them back in the pot now. Put the pot under there. There we go. Put the pot there. 
All right, don't breathe. Don't breathe. Yes, if you're wondering how you make rivets, uh, you need a special rivet making tool, which uh, I know your models have some rivet tools in stock, but I don't know which ones. Not the one that was used to make these, because the ones that made these is one you get in Australia. Not a cheap thing. Leave no rivet behind. And of course, it pays not to knock the little tub over. Like a spoon, like I did. And the other thing, of course, is this brush. I'm trying to get them in the pot, but it's just generating static. <laughs> so they're all just sticking to the brush or each other. Get in. And all I can think about is pizza. God damn it. Mmm, pizza. I can hear my arteries hardening as I speak. Right, I think that's all of them. Leave no man behind. Vibe. Yes, huge success. Oh, no, there's one there. Get off. Okay, one pinged off onto the carpet. Look at that. Huge success. Don't knock it over, Fox. You simpleton. Oh, there's one there on the table. We'll take that one. That was fun. Over there it goes. Here's why cutting mat is your friend. Right, so that's that done. I think they're just about lined up. Perfect. Almost perfect. Now it's perfect. There you go. The mold line removed, and that, although it took me a few minutes to sort that, if you ignore the spilling the rivets, uh, although it took me a few minutes, that was actually quicker than it would have taken me had I tried to carefully work around the rivets with my sanding equipment. And also, if I had sanded all those bits away, those rivets would be a lot smaller. They'd be sanded smooth, so there you go. We'll get this bit cleaned up and then we'll stick that on because I need to wiggle that around a little bit. Uh, this bit just needs a bit of a sandy sandy. This is where the actual pauldron glues on, so I don't need to worry about that so much. I need to make sure it's smooth, but other than that, I don't really care. Uh, these bits here need to be flat tacular. There's no, rather handily, there's no actual mold line on this, or at least if there is, it follows an edge, which is just fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. I do like when that happens. The mold line is actually a corner or an edge. Best thing ever. Minimal effort, maximum results. So just got to clean the nubs off. That goes on there. And then this piece attaches to three little blebs on there and two little blebs on here. Three little blebs from school, are we? So that's why you want to make sure you've got some wiggly wiggly room in these two bits I've just glued on. Just so that if I need to wiggle them around to line them up, I can do. I can get some, I'll get some, some thick glue on there just to give myself a few seconds. I'll have a look at chat in a moment. Still thinking about pizza. <gasps> oh. Domino's chicken special with all loads of extra toppings that you don't normally get on a chicken pizza, like, you know, ground beef and onions and chili and mm, need all of that now in my face. Right now, right now. Fortunately, it cost me four hundred pounds. But hey, what can you do? All right, so it's down there. Thin glue out again. Maniple. I do like that word. It's a great word. Maniple. A real word. It means the things as well. It has a meaning with the knights and stuff. And fortunately, my glue brush in the pot is doing that spready out thing, which I hate. Right, so that goes on there. I can push that down with pushing. Pushing. And some glue into the gaps. We're not fussed about the gaps on these bits of frame because they just look like bits of frame. You could fill these little gaps, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's, uh, it'd be, a, 
the return on your investment will be minimal. For the most part, you're not going to see most of this detail anyway. If you do like these little lines here, for the most part, you're not really going to see much of that anyway. And uh, I need big pegs now. Big pegs! I need more big pegs. Have, have I got more big pegs? I've got one more big peg. That big dog butt with less legs. Big peg! That's going to snap if I do that. I don't want to do that. Maybe not that then. One there. There we go. Put that there. There you go. Right, can I get it on? Oh, hang on. I don't want it to ping me rivets off, so hopefully that'll be all right. There we go. Let's hold that in place for a minute. It'll be fine. It's kind of pinging it that way a little bit, so we'll take them off, actually, because we don't need them. So, uh, yeah, so you're not really going to see too much of this. And like I say, you can, with this kind of inner frame part, which is all like, you can imagine it's heavy steel and foundry type, Iron, it's not actually iron and steel, but you know what I mean. Little heavy metal work frame. You can reduce it a bit by squidging out the glue and smoothing it down like I've just done there. But for most of it, you'd be fine. You're not, it's going to get covered in many coats of null oil and other things as well. So you have a pauldron over this bit and an arm sticking out here. You're not going to see most of it. So I shall hold that like that and I shall have a look at the chat. Let's see what the chat's doing. Uh, where are we? La 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 I bought the Renegade set a while ago, so looking forward to building two knights at some point, says Bobbins9000. I have the Renegade set. It's a fantastic set. Uh, if you don't know what the Imperial Knights Renegade set is, it's a set that they brought out about five or six years ago for about a month. And then they didn't. They, t they took it out of stock. It's, it no longer existed. And then they brought it back about two years ago for a month. Uh, and it's one of those ones they bring back every now and then in like sm small amounts. And I bought a set of it. I was tempted to buy two, but I couldn't afford it. And the reason it was such an amazing thing and everybody jumped all over it like flies to our poop, he said, thinking of the children, um, was that it's, it's basically you get two Imperial Knights and a load of scenery. So you get like an, a, a, an Imperial Knight and a Chaos Knight. And you get the big um, scenery piece that's the bit where the Imperial Knights stand and get repaired and stuff. Big piece of scenery. I mean, big piece of scenery. Um, and Imperial Knights are what, 85, 90 quid? And the scenery itself, the scenery piece by itself is about 35 quid. The whole set was 120 quid which is basically you're basically getting an imperial knight for free because you're paying for one night and the scenery uh, so of course i bought one and i've got i've not touched it yet but i do intend i've built one night so far that i that i uh, built and sold i've got two nights in that renegade set and i'm going i'm building my own little imperial guard army that's going to have a mixture of Imperial Guard, it's going to have Death Corps of Krieg, it's going to have Tempest of Sions, it's going to have some Space Wolves, Space Marines working with them. And I think it will have uh, a load of Space Wolf Knights. I think I'll make the Knights, I could make the Knights Free Blaze, but I think I'll make them in the, the Space Wolves Knights. So I'll have a load of Space Wolves Knights. Now I don't know in that set there whether you can build it as two Imperial Knights or you, you have to build one as a Chaos Knight. I can't quite remember. It's been a long time since I looked at the sprues, so gluing on yes yeah, so you have got a few little beads of glue sticking out where i've squeezed it together but that just kind of looks like welding up here where you've got little beads of glue sticking out it just looks like welding beads and these bits here where it's got like a curved bit and i've got a bead of glue sticking out i can just run a sanding sponge over that really gently if i wanted to that's that there. let's have a look at chat then and see where we are uh... Paul Di Tommaso settled on craft dinner for lunch, so it's basically microwave food. Good lad, that's the right answer. I thought so I was about putting things under domes, we'd be vacuuming the dust off. They're in a cabinet, but the cabinet isn't dust proof, unfortunately. I don't tend to keep a lot of my models, I tend to sell them, so I don't have, I only have a few things in cabinets. Um, because once I've built something, I don't care. It's, once it's built, I've lost interest in it and it just gets sold. I've got a few things. 
but they they'd go in the cabinet but then they just the cabinet unfortunately that's the thing the uh, the detolf cabinets from ikea they're dirt cheap and they're great but they're not exactly dustproof uh, lord barkley's off to go and feed the kids it'll take 10 minutes to find some lions <laughs> Uh, that's a stomper, says the raging modeler. I see a lot of starship filth in that night's future. No, well, no, I've not done starship filth for a while purely because, um, uh, no. If I do, I've actually found it easier now and faster to use enamel weathering streaking grimes kind of thing. I know streaking grimes and stuff like the AK grimes for the same thing for a gunk wash than uh, oil paints because the thing with a streak with a gunk wash with oil paints although it's starship filth and it's lovely leaving it for five days to dry is a right pain in the butt basically so if i do any of that on here i'm not sure on what weathering i'm going to put on this yet but if i do any of it it's going to be uh enamel weathering streaking grimes i think i think uh can't beat a wiggle says colin at festa 67's workshop wiggle's good uh, ah, beef hot spot, beef hot pot with Brussels sprouts for dinner and pizza can be on Sunday. Ooh. Wendy Hickson can't have enough rivets. Spillage. Well done, Fox. It <laughs> says the raging model about me spilling me rivets. Well, we well we aren't wondering how to spill rivets. Says Panzer. Mm -mm. How to break Fox? Spill a bunch of rivets. By the way, hi everyone. Says Twisted Rail Hobbies. Welcome, Twisted Rail Hobbies. Uh, where are we up to? Raging model should be getting his car back tonight. MOT failed, 350 quid for the work. Oh, yeah. Uh, my last MOT was about 400 and something. No, the last one was zero because it passed. Oh, it had one windscreen wiper. It passed after they replaced the windscreen wiper. The one before that was 450 quid with some welding and stuff. It's a 20 year old Fiesta. It's 18 years old. But I have to spend money on it because if I have to get that car replaced, it's going to be a boring colour. My car's got like a shark mouth painted on it. So, yeah, I'm not replacing that if I can avoid it. Uh, chat is wonky again, says Muse. It just seems to be you, I think, Muse. I don't know what you're doing to it. Have you got that Windows 3.1 computer doing the dial up again or something? Right, I think that's going to stay where it is now. There we go. That is the side. That's where the arm locks in. You can take the arms on and off. Uh, and for the for the benefits of painting porpoises, I don't think I'll be gluing the arms on until the very end. Right, then. right where are we up to? It's uh, 10 to now. I think what we'll do, I think we'll stop there because we're coming up to 10 to 6 and I need to go and have a great big wee and also go and make Mama Fox her dinner and then try and not have pizza. Ooh. So we shall leave it there. When we come back next time, we'll carry on with the torso. But for now, we've got yon bits built. It kind of sits like that. You start to see how big this thing's going to be now. It's a big chicken. Uh, let's have a quick look at chat. Fox, I make the craft in it in a pot, not in the microwave. I know, when I say microwave, I mean it's that kind of food. I don't mean like, it's like a ready meal. Rather than, rather than saying it a three-course meal you've made out of ingredients, if you know what I mean. Nothing wrong with it. I live on ready meals all the time because I'm highly unhealthy. But hey, with my internet, says Muse. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's going to do us, I think. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, of course, uh, do pop along to emodels.co.uk, your one-stop shop. All your model making needs, all of them, every single need you've got, the model making related. They can satisfy it for you. And don't forget, of course, if you are able to visit them, uh, they should be reopening their doors from the 12th of April. The warehouse. It's a working warehouse. It's not a shop. It's a working warehouse. But you can go along and hang out with them and buy, spend lots of money, basically, and have a good time. So that should be, hopefully, 12th of April. If you're not already on their Facebook page, go and subscribe to it. It's eModels LTD on the Facebook. Uh, make sure you subscribe to that so you can find out any updates to the opening date. It should be the 12th of April. It could, of course, change at the last minute. So just make sure you subscribe to that. Subscribe to this channel so you can make sure you don't miss of any of our shows. Miss of any of our shows. That's just the worst English ever, Fox. I will be back on this channel on Monday with uh, Colin, Chris and Ted, of course, because Monday night, 9 p.m. is the eModels Monday live show. Do come along. 
anybody who's new to this channel like underdog do come along and have a watch it's just nonsense we talk rubbish for two hours uh, and give stuff away so it's, it's a good laugh uh, but don't forget of course i will be back at midnight tonight on festus 67's workshop channel he's in the chat you can post a link if you want colin i'll let you i'll let you post a link if you want even though it's new models channel i'll let you post a link because because i'm in charge at the minute and i make all the decisions so post a link uh, so i'll be back at midnight uh, with colin i'll be working on my space marines my space walls so come and join us it's a good laugh if you're up at midnight it's a good laugh we just chill out and get no work at all done whatsoever and shoot the breeze uh, then of course i'll be back tomorrow on uh, my own channel uh, on saturday for warhammer no not for skyrim saturday at three o'clock and then on sunday again on my channel for warhammer sunday so make sure to watch that as well but anyway until then thank you very much for watching thank you for everyone who's come along uh, have a enjoy the rest of your afternoon enjoy the dinner whatever your dinner or lunch is going to be or whether it's a craft meal or a handcrafted meal you see what i did there go ahead and enjoy it and i shall see lots of you at midnight tonight on colin's channel until then take I'm, I'm trying to stall while colin gets around to posting the link for his stream colin at some point dad can you just post the link to colin's stream because he's taking forever because <laughs> if i stop the stream now the chat stops and then you can't post a link colin anytime now anytime four minutes to fill and i'm dying for a wee type faster <laughs> Oh dear, I'm going to swig a coffee. Fill out of 30 seconds. Mm. Great, you've got about 20 seconds for him to post it up. Ask me a question. Fill the last minute or two while Colin posts a link to his show tonight on his channel. God damn it. Can't get the staff. I know there's a 30 second delay, but... Has he gone to sleep, Dad? Has, has Colin gone to sleep? Need to keep the chat open so I can post the link. Mm. Somebody asked me a question. Anything? There we go. God, took a while. I think Colin's probably gone to sleep, so there you go. But yes, that's the link for tonight's stream with me and Colin. So do come along and watch if you haven't already. Anyway, that's going to do me. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go buy something awesome. <laughs> uh, I oh, by the way, um, GW stock should hopefully be back. At the, they're expecting, hopefully, um, a link soon. Dad says, done it. I've posted. Thank you very much, Dad. Yes, there should be. A, they're hopefully getting some more GW stock in stock soon. Uh, like I said before, just with everything being on fire at the minute, getting stock from manufacturers and suppliers is difficult for them to do. So it's been a while, but they're getting more stock, especially of Imperial Knights and stuff in soon. So stay tuned for that. Again, subscribe to their Facebook page so they can make sure when they've got more stuff in stock. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, let me see if my buttons work. Salute my buttons don't work. Hey, I'll say, here's amoebas.